Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here, and it is Friday once again, the day after Thanksgiving. It is November 26. Woohoo! Woohoo Woo is right. As a matter of fact, today is Dustin's mother, my uh my wife from a few years ago who passed away a few years ago, but today is her birthday. So we're gonna go out and raise a toast to your mom tonight, Dustin. Definitely. So today would have been her 60th birthday. Wow. So we we have got we're we're in Black Friday. Black Friday. Black Friday, man. It's a it's a big day of the year. I hope you guys are out there surviving the stores. <laughs> Who goes out and does stores anymore? I, I bet a lot of people do. I've only done it once uh, to a Fry's Electronics store. It was back when I was living in California, and I got uh, new speakers and new monitors. Yeah. The Fry's Electronics. It was back when. When I was, was the last time you went out at Black Friday, Nick? Uh, it seems to be honest, I'm, I usually do 90% of my ordering online, but it seems like I'm always out on Friday for something and I can't, you know, like, oh, I couldn't get this or something. Yeah. Yada, yada. So I don't know. I'm, I'm usually out there every year, at least briefly. <clears throat> well, today we got quite a bit of stuff to go over with you guys. Uh, first of all, we got Dustin with us and we've got Nick and we have a special guest in this, in the room today, Jesse Batterton. <laughs> so um but uh we uh first of all we've got several i told you guys we've got several courses that we've been working to get out to you guys that'll be coming out over the next month or so but several of them now are up for pre-order and i'm really excited to tell you about them the first one being uh what do we ha who do we have first uh, do we have armand or do we have uh tony cipriano, tony cipriano. so um you guys I think we had that up last week for pre-order, uh, and it's still up for pre-order. Tony Cipriano, as you know, did our ZBrush courses for us. He also, our course, and they also did the um, sculpting uh, nude model for us, which has been very popular. Um, he loves doing monsters and, and uh, maquettes and those sorts of things for Universal and among other studios. And so uh, he's got a new course coming out on sculpting movie monsters, and it's really, really cool. And uh, um, we're in the process of getting that in the can, but you can order it now at a very discounted price. So get out there and check that out. We've also got a new course coming out from uh, Armand Serrano. We got that one coming up. There we go. Armand, uh, for those of you that don't know Armand, Armand uh, is the next Disney layout artist, a uh, visual development artist. Um, he and I worked together for years and years here in Florida at the Orlando studio. Uh, we worked on Brother Bear together. And uh, but Armand now is off and he teaches and uh, does work for several studios around uh, around all over the place, all over in different countries. And um, and first of all, let me back up from that. We've had so many requests from people asking for a uh, production design, visual development type of course. And so I really held off on it because it's not my forte, although I've done it. It's not something that I could give a really well-rounded course on and I really wanted to wait and find the right kind of person and so when we found Armand uh, was teaching that we jumped on it and I got to tell you this course is big it's full um, it is so well thought out um, Armand is one of these guys that really approaches his projects from a very thoughtful place and really does a lot of research everything that's put into whatever it is, is that he's doing has a lot of thought behind it and so uh and he's very good at getting that process clear to you guys so yeah I'm, it's actually really cool in this class he even goes into virtual reality and shows yeah. how he's um sort of i i don't want to say pioneered it but he's definitely one of the leading guys in terms of using virtual reality in a 2d uh or film development pipeline because uh like if anybody saw marvel's what if yeah. He actually was hugely involved in the uh, visual development and design of that show. Oh, really? And uh, he actually shaved off, they they told him, he probably shaved a month off of their entire production timeline just with the way he was able to pre-visualize stuff in VR. And it was huge. So. Can we, I, I, I don't normally do this, but can we jump over to, I want to see if we can do this. Yeah. Can we jump over to my desktop? Yeah. I just want to show, show some of the imagery that uh, Nick has up on the page. Um, it's really cool stuff. So this Free is elephants. all... What's that? Free elephants. Yeah. <laughs> this is all stuff that is part of the um, part of the course. I wish I could blow this up more, but I don't think I can. 
it's just your mind um, is so big. It's yeah. But this is all stuff. These are just frame grabs that Nick, Nick, uh, Nick pulled from the course. And um, I just want you to see how thorough. This is some of the, the virtual reality uh, 3D uh, land uh, uh, environmental development that, that they do. And then he takes this stuff and then he creates uh, 2D imagery out of it. It's just amazing. Um, but this is, you know, this is something he did for Zootopia, um, one of the projects he worked on at Disney. And, you know, Zootopia was con consisted of different worlds, different lands, and he really approached those different environments really thoughtfully. And all of this thought process he puts into this course. So you guys are really in for a treat, whoever gets this course. It's really amazing and uh, really great stuff. He's done some Star Wars stuff. Um, he worked on Mulan. Yeah, so that course is 50% off this weekend, so get it on the pre-order while you can because uh, the price will be going up when the class comes out, which is in just a couple weeks. Yeah. Um, All right. Then... So there we go. So let me uh, let me jump over to... Um, why don't you jump over to the next slide, Dustin? Coleman. David Coleman. And I want to do the same thing with him. I'm going to jump to his thing. To, uh, keep, keep the slide up because I haven't gotten to his... Uh, this thing yet but david coleman who um uh he's just an amazing animal artist uh storyboard artist and um is so good at doing dynamic drawing and so that's what this next course is about that he's pulled out um can you explain a little bit while i find this next page nick yeah, the whole idea is that uh, David is, uh, first of all, for those that don't know, he's an Emmy Award winning uh, character designer and visual development artist. He's currently working on the Lion King sequel, uh, boarding all kinds of exciting sequences and that. Um, but he's really sought after in both live action and animation because he has this really like sort of fluid, live, lifelike style. Like his, his rough drawings and doodles feel like they're going to jump off the page. And so the whole premise of this course is how he applies that style to yeah. production work. So he, first of all, he explains how to do that style, how to get really flowing gestures and, yeah. and life, like, you know. Drawing making, with life, energy, and story. Yeah, making yeah. drawings that feel alive, essentially. So there's, he goes through drawing animal reference from video footage. He goes through drawing from life. And then he takes it at the end and applies it towards character design, and he applies it towards boarding a couple of storyboard sequences in real time. Once you switch over, it's a really cool class. Yeah, one of the things I love about I love everything about David's drawing, but is um, this kind of stuff. Look at the look how few lines he's able to put down, um, but still capture an attitude, an action, a gesture. Um, it's very, very dynamic. Um, I remember growing up, one of my favorite artists, and I remember going to the bookstore because I couldn't afford to buy the book, but I would just look at it at the bookstore all the time and put it away, was Frank Frazetta's um, imagery. And um, especially his drawings, his ink drawings, they they had this type of life. And I, you know, I remember when I saw David, uh, these storyboards are, they're so simple, but they're so dynamic. Um when I started seeing David's drawings, especially his his action drawings of animals like this, horses, apes, lions, tigers, um, they felt like Frazetta drawings to me. There's so much heart and life and action and thrust and everything else that just makes a, a drawing great. I know he would take that as a huge compliment, and that's actually, I'm sure, very much by design. He even references Frazetta in this course quite a bit. There's a there's a whole section where he kind of breaks down studying Frazetta and Heinrich Clay and Walt Stansfield and yeah. kind of takes you through breaking down some of their drawings. It's 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 really well done. Yeah. So if you're looking to get some you know some dynamics and uh, drama in your drawing, then this course is for you. He's He's so good at teaching it as well. Um, but yeah, this is all stuff from, from David that I just think is amazing. And it's funny, you know, I, I met David years and years ago um, when he was working at uh, uh, Cartoon Network. And, uh, and ironically enough, a few months later, I ended up hiring him for a movie that we were doing over at Disney. And, uh, and that's where we really, you know, got to be friends and, and 
drew together a lot and and uh shoot it's been 15 years almost 20 years now that we've been friends and uh it's just an amazing amazing work and uh i'm really excited for him to have another course on our site and sharing it with you guys yeah so. absolutely he's got a great one an animal character design on our site too which is also on sale which is probably worth mentioning that in addition to these courses, right now, everything on the website is on sale. We've got All right, so let's move on to the next one. There you go. So everything. that's our next announcement, which is our Black Friday sale. Yeah, so everything on the website right now is 40%, 50%, 60%, all the way up to 80% off. Um, the courses up on the screen right now, character design, acting for animation, uh, drawing and procreate, and story for live action and animation. All those classes are their lowest price ever at just 15 bucks each. We've also got a bunch of $1 brush sets today. Uh, we've got $5 classes and courses. And so go to CreatureArtTeacher.com because this is the biggest sale of the year by far. So. And for those of you that have been waiting and waiting and waiting, and I know Dustin has been waiting and waiting and waiting, yeah. we finally got Dustin's reference pack from Africa out. It is available. You guys have access to 1,400 images. No, I, I changed my mind. I pulled it. It's okay, so you have ab ab absolutely no access. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's available now. They have over 1,400 photos, and it's, in, it's divided into three different packs. Uh, one is the Big Cats of Africa, which is over 300 photos of cheetahs, 200 photos of leopards, and over 160 photos of lions. And then the other pack is uh, animals and birds of Africa, which include uh, weaver birds, secretary birds, elephants, wildebeest, zebras, and everything else in between. And the third pack is all that bubbled together into the giant 1,400 photo pack. So they're available now. Go out there. And Hold on. I'm, I'm keep talking because I'm, I'm trying to find it on the website. It's on. I'm posting yeah. links. So. And because there were so many photos, is why it took so long for for it to come out because there's just so many. What's it under? Our art merchandise. Uh, it should be back under, under, right under. Uh, uh, there should be a photo reference. Under. It's right under the main like tutorials and lessons. There's artist photo packs right there. Art reference photo pack. Oh, there it is. I'm looking right at it. Looking right at it, dear pig. But yeah, super, super exciting. I think it took about 38,000 photos on that trip. Yeah. And you really boiled it down to, um, you let's, yeah, let's come back here. You were able to boil it down to some uh, really beautiful photos, um, 1,400 um, out of the 33,000. <laughs> and, um, but they're really, really great for, um, like I said, for, for a drawing painting reference. And, um, you know, one of the things I recommend when using reference, and, and you guys have seen me do it, uh, and I'm going to use some of it today. You know, these are, if you want to copy them, that's great, but really use these as a, as a jumping off point to create your own imagery. And that's really what I use reference for. When I get an idea for something, I need to, if, if I have a kind of a blank spot in my head as far as what the anatomy might be on, on a certain part, at a certain angle, whatever that might be, that's where I pull out my reference. And that's what this is going to be good for. And there's so much uh, imagery in here between water books like this and the eagles like that and zebras and the, just the variety and elephants. Um, it really is uh, just an amazing pack. It's, it's an, from an amazing place. Uh, you know, we every time I say this all the time. These action shots are just fantastic Thank with the you. with the cheetahs. Every time I go to Africa, I leave a little piece of my heart. If I keep going there enough, my entire heart's going to be left there. Yes, yeah, I know. I know that feeling now. Yeah, it's and, just uh, it's just incredible. And yeah, and the and that trip really made me learn a lot about my own photography and really helped me expand far, far more than I ever have in any other, any other time. Yeah. Here's a comment from a viewer, Aaron. Is it just me or is Aaron's camera really overexposed? <laughs> <laughs> I told you. 
It's it's just you. He's an angel. <laughs> We had a little exposure. To I, I I instructed Dustin to set the camera like that because otherwise it's it's been too. Yeah, the, I wanted it like that. He wanted he wanted more contrast, so I give him a little extra contrast. He goes more, more, give him more, and then just cranked in like, yep, that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so here's what I think we should do, Aaron. So we're not just a twenty minute commercial at the beginning. Yeah, I want to jump into. I think we should the... start drawing, and then we can get into what you're drawing. Well, so... I want to start drawing, but it, I want to, I'm draw what I'm drawing today. There's a reason for it. so. Um, which no, is... I know, but I was thinking maybe we could start drawing and then. Okay. Just so we're not sliding. And sliding gotcha. And sliding. Well, let me start drawing then. Today I'm doing um, uh, as you guys have seen in the past. Um, one of the things I love to do um, is take different animal species and mix them together and just come up with different creatures. And I thought today would be kind of fun to do that because we have another art contest coming up. Last week, uh, we announced the winner for the iPad Pro for uh, doing the drama of nature. And that went really well. So well that we want to do another one. We got another iPad challenge right here. Uh, animal hybrids. Yeah, we're giving away an iPad Pro again. Our good friends at CashForYourMac.com, who, by the way, they're having a big Black Friday sale over on their website. Um, so definitely go check that out. Um, they're giving us another iPad Pro to give away, and the theme this time is animal hybrids. Uh, so the entry deadline is December 14th. Uh, basically, uh, it's an animal mashup, and Aaron can explain a little bit more what he's looking for, but I, if, in the rules say it's a minimum of two animals have to be combined together in, yep. in some sort of creative way. Yeah, exactly. And so I'm, and I'm going to do it today. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Um, today I thought it'd be, I'd, I'd take a crocodile and a lion and mix them together and see what we get. And, um, and that's, you know, uh, actually, can we pull up, where do I have those? Where do we have the other hybrids? Uh, they're, they're on the URL, creatureartteacher.com slash yeah, Mac, because that's where the entry form is. Yeah. Let me come back here. I'm going to go to the gallery. Because I know they're in the concept art gallery, right? Yeah. Concept art. Let's scroll down, shall we? Boom, boom, boom. If I scroll past it, let me know because I'm going kind of fast. It's at the bottom. Oh, there we go. So this is one that we did, that I did a few years ago, where I took a zebra and a lion and I mixed the two together. And we got a Zion or a Libra. I don't know which. I like Libra. But uh, uh, I wish I could blow that up a little bigger, but I can't. And then the other one, which is really weird looking, I took a tiger and an African elephant and mixed the two together. And a tiger font. <laughs> tiger font. Tiger font. And, uh, and so these are the th that's the type of thing I'm talking about. It's, it's just goofy, fun. But one of the things that I think you can learn with this is that, and if you want it to be believable, is understanding that, the the anatomy, right? I hit it. You've got to understand that anatomy in order for it to work. And so when I when I hear lion and crocodile, I'm uh, thinking like the body of a lion, but having the the thick scales of a the crocodile. Yeah. Well, I don't like that. Um, I don't. I don't like. A crocodile? Crocodile? The crocodile. Aaron, do you use a screen protector for your iPad? And if you, when you draw over it, uh, for sensitivity and color, or just, or just, or just, or just, or just. You okay? Aaron, do you use a, a paper-like screen protector for your iPad? And if you do, when you draw over it, does it change the sensitivity of the stylus or the color tone? I don't. Yeah. There you go. You just draw straight on the screen. Just draw straight on the screen. Okay. Straight on. All right on, right on. Right on, right on, right on. So I want to get clear silhouette. So the last one I was doing, I thought was kind of, I thought in my head, 
was going to be neat. And once I started doing it, I realized it wasn't so cool. Jenna on YouTube says, I went to the zoo over the weekend to draw live, and no one checked in the buildings to see if people were still there. It closed, and when we left, the exit was locked. <laughs> we had to wait a while for security to let us out. That's funny. Locked in the zoo. So here, I'm trying to just come up with some... A lot of times I'll just work very loose to find that dynamic pose. And often I'm drawing, I draw too big and I'll keep shrinking it. Martin Schroeder, we have first snow here in Austria in this winter. Yay! Wow. I'm not sure if I said it verbally out loud when you were talking about it. So uh, I know Dustin put it up on the screen and I posted the link. But if you're interested in participating, uh, you can go to creatureartteacher.com slash Mac. And uh, that'll give you the entry deadline and the upload form. And just like last time, we'd like to see your reference. Um, you know, we, we want this to be based on some sort of real animals, not just imagine. Continually shrinking, playing with composition. Aaron, what was your favorite dish from Thanksgiving? I always loved the turkey, man. So we had, uh, we had like she's 20. supposed to say Madonna. She's a dish. She's a dish. Best served cold. No, it's not. That's revenge. <laughs> um, now, what was your favorite? Uh, I, well, I'm always a turkey nut. I love tur turkey with cranberry is just my absolute favorite. And you're, you're adamantly a canned cranberry guy, right? I'm ad adamantly the jellied cranberry, yes. Yeah. Yeah, my dad was the same way. Yeah. Uh, can you do more than one entry for the contents? I said only one, just like last time, because it's so many to go through. Yeah, we get it, it gets unwieldy otherwise for us. Because you could end up getting like five or ten of them from one person. Yeah. So pick your best. And um, let's see. Does it have to be digital? No, it can be traditional or digital. That was a question. Yeah, just like the last contest, if you um, – actually, some of you may not have been around for the last contest. So, yeah, um, uh, it, yeah it can be traditional, uh, digital, whatever. I would like to see your reference if you have it. Hey, guys, remind me because I forgot. Uh, from the sheer size of the thing, it looks like it, but does Aaron have a 32-inch Cintiq? I do. Yes. That is correct. So I'm always thinking about silhouette here. Erica says, yes, jelly cranberry and turkey is the best. It is. Uh, did you see crocodiles in the Mara hunt zebra and wildebeest during the migration there? Well, we saw them, we saw them in the yeah. same place. Yeah, we saw the migration. And we saw the after, yeah, and we saw the aftermath. Yeah. Yeah, we missed any. That was the main reason we went this time of year. We went was to see the crossings, and we kind of struck out on actual crossing. Yeah, but we did um, had a lot of photos of zebras, wildebeest running around, and uh, and a crocodile munching down on an old old zebra leg. But that's kind of about it. Going into my photos, I'm going to pull up my reference. Your reference? My reference. 
Are they? Oh, there they are. Crocodiles. Crocodilians. Look at that. Yeah. I take a lot of pride in those shots. <laughs> Whoops. Done. Yeah, are you able to do um, zoom in on those shots? Just want to show people how how much texture there are in these in these images. That's a good idea. Look at that. Yeah, because these photos, a lot of these photos, I didn't crop a whole lot, and so they're almost, if not above. 8K quality photos. And so you can really crop in and get and uh use these photos in any way you wish. Yeah, I mean, you can really zoom in. Uh will we get extra points for making up an invented biology for our hybrid or does the picture have to speak for itself. The picture should always speak for itself, but I definitely want to hear your your thoughts behind it. Yeah, we have a little submission when you when you just like last time, the form is essentially the exact same it was. Again, I hate to I know many of you might not have answered the last one. But if there's a little form there when you go to preacherarteacher.com slash Mac, it's got the complete rules. And when you upload the um your artwork there's a little input field where you can type you know briefly some of what your thought prices th thought process might have been you know you can upload your reference work you can upload your uh, process work if you want you know if you did some sketching and drawing and doodling we'd love to see all that you know what your thought process was treat it like a visual development project yeah bow show uh have you tried the 16 inch cintiq yet uh, no, and we're actually going to do an unboxing of that. Um, a pro I'm not sure if I'm going to do it as a live stream or we're going to just going to do uh, put together a YouTube video next week because I, I do need to get to that. Um, rather than I think rather than wait till maybe we'll just do a special live stream, um, either that or a uh, or I'll, we'll do a, a, a YouTube video. But we'll, we'll be doing that next week, so look out for that for sure. Okay, I think we got enough. Was Roy E. Uh, Disney responsible for saving Disney animation, uh, but before right before the Renaissance? Pretty much, yeah. It was him that came in and I think talked Michael Eisner out of shutting everything down. Come on, there we go. There's my screenshots. I've got this idea. Like I think this is a clear silhouette. It's okay. But it's not as it's not dynamic the way I, this one that I have in my head. I've got this one where he's coming towards camera. And I want that. I know it's there's something about a crock when you're looking straight at it. That's interesting to me. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get the get it the way I want it. You could probably mix. They do have a um, a head-on shot of the uh, leopard walking toward the camera. I'm not worried about that. That part I can get. I don't think I'm going to be able to get this without. Trying to get the right angle. Oh, wait a minute. This might work. <clears throat> How often do you have snow in Florida? Uh, <laughs> Pretty much never. It's happened. Yeah, it's happened in my like, lifetime. It looks like way back. It doesn't stick, though. Not where we're no. going. No. You get up near Gainesville, I think they've actually had snow stick up there. Yeah, it happened back in the 70s. I don't think it snowed any time during the 80s. It snowed in the 90s. 
back in the 70s when I was in third grade back in 1976. I remember it uh, definitely snowing then at flurries when I was walking to school. We were all freaking out. I think that'll work. That little sketch. Is that clear? Can you tell? Kind of from that angle, what the angle on the croc? Can you see that? Yeah, I can see the croc. Okay, good. Hold on. I'm not sure about the. Uh... I just hold on. Uh, have you seen Encanto yet? I don't know. It's a, it's it's open today. Oh. Is it on Disney? Is it on Disney Channel, or do I have to go to the theaters? I think it's in the theaters. Yeah. I could be wrong. Checking right now. Yeah. See, I like this angle better. December 24th, it'll be on Disney Plus. Christmas Eve. Oh! That's not the else on Disney Plus. What? The first uh, two parts of the Beatles Get Back documentary. Yeah, oh, yeah. Today. Yeah. That came out today? I believe so. Yeah, Tony Cipriano was talking about it. That looks like a really fun, fun documentary. Oh, you know what? I'm going to do this. Let's do it as a vertical. Duh. There we go. Oh, yeah. Now I know. Now I know what I'm going to do. Look at that. He wants to know, is this antique? Connected to a computer, or is the computer inside of the Cintiq? The, com uh, the Cintiq is connected to a computer. Yeah, so the, the Cintiq is essentially a monitor. You can connect it to any computer. It doesn't. They make the Mobile Studio Pro, which has a computer built in. Um, but I prefer just the standalone Cintiqs because they, you can essentially use them forever. You know, they're not limited yeah. by the computer inside of them. Oh, turns out uh, it got the actually released on the 24th. Yeah, it's been a while ago. Oh. It's out already in theaters, but it comes out December 24th, Christmas Eve. Um, it looks amazing as far as that. Have you, have you seen any of it, Nick? Mm -hmm. yeah, um, that's great. yeah I, I hadn't really seen much of it. I just looked at some stuff to, today. It's featuring music by your favorite Lin Manuel. Yeah. <laughs> I like him. Don't get me wrong. I just feel he's, he's getting a little overexposed. I think he's great. Not as overexposed as you are. It's true. <laughs> but I do like the, um, I love the animation of the house itself. Like, can you imagine how complicated the, the rigging must be for the, for the entire house? If there is any rigging on there. Yeah. Are all the books on their way now? Um, no. Almost. They're all signed. Yep. And they're all boxed and packaged. Um, we're just trying to get them out the door. Yesterday was a holiday. So none went out yesterday. Well, we've got about another 500 going in the mail today. Can we use our pet with the wild animal for the contest? Of course. Sure. Any hybrid. It's got an idea. How does one enter this contest for mixing animals? Well, go to creatureartteacher.com slash Mac. 
You oh, upload yeah. your art there. I'd like to thank our good friends at CashForYourMac.com for donating an iPad Pro to us again uh, that the winner will receive. You also get a free one-year annual membership to CreatureArtTeacher.com, by the way, as well. So, uh, Having seen the five-minute uh, preview for the new Jurassic World movie, I saw that uh, yesterday, I believe. There's a franchise I'm, like, way over. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think it, I think it's the same. I think it's the same preview that they used uh, to open the uh, Fast and Furious movie when I was in theaters. I think they just finally released it to. Uh, I, don't, I don't like the main. No, I gotta. I may put a little bit of fur like this coming off his back. You like that? Aaron, I like... Will you ever come to Costa Rica? Yes. I'd like to move to Costa Rica. Got so many friends that have moved to a good I shouldn't say so many, but I've got a good number that have moved to Costa Rica and just are living their best life. Uh, which one of Frank Thomas's and Ollie uh Johnston scenes and characters are your favorite that uh that touched you? I can't remember. I don't know their their individual sections well enough to say which ones are my favorite but you know all their work on bambi bambi is my favorite animated film of all time and they both did amazing stuff on bambi but so did milton and you know that stuff just blows my mind there so there's our i like that I like that setup. Auto Beverly comments saying, I think the Crocs head needs to be a little bigger. Oh, do you? Well, aren't we all a critic? <laughs> but are you nice? But you got to remember, when his head is turned, that's got a lot of weight out in front. But I will, I will try to make it a little bigger. Who said that? I want to remember who said that. <laughs> Autumn Beverly. <laughs> and uh, okay, she's and, right. And I believe Lily's a little little late. Is asking what hybrid uh, are we doing right now? Oh come on! Is it that hard to? to am I drawing it that bad? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a it's an iguana with a uh, <laughs> Godzilla. Godzilla. That's a lion with a crocodile. Godzilla. Okay, now I see it better. That does look really good. Thanks. From, uh, Thank you. From Benjamin. Hi, all. Uh, Dustin, have you seen the new Bebop on Netflix? <laughs> I have. I watched the whole thing. And be and constructive. I'm, and I be regret it. Oh, come on. Be constructive. There's a lot uh, of people that worked hard on that. I will, I will admit the visual effects for it look great, but uh, but the story wise just ruined it for me. Yeah, the only thing I liked was the visual was the visual effects of the ships flying, whatever they're whatever they were, which is not that often. But man, all right. So I'm going to open up. Uh... Did I open those already? I did. Give me there. I'm going to put them up on my other screen. Uh, what do you think about adding some feathers? Feathers? Feathers. No. No. I'm going to. It's a lion croc hybrid. I'm just going to do the two. Good. Keeping it simple. Keeping it simple. So it's like color. When you start mixing too much color, you get mud. Uh, what's the difference between a wolf and a coyote? Uh, one starts with a C. The other one starts with a W. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, they're they're both canids. They're both uh, in the dog family, basically. But um, 
yeah, there's there's quite a few differences. Biggest being size. A, a coyote is about a third the size, maybe even a quarter the size of a wolf. And also, are coyotes usually loners while wolves stay in packs? Uh, but wolves can be loners as well. And, and, coyotes, more and coyotes can travel in they they can travel in groups sometimes as well. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, when we were in Yellowstone, yeah, we saw uh, the lone wolf. There was a series of coyotes that were teaming up against the lone wolf. Oh, were there? Oh, that's right. I'm a lone wolf pack of one. Now, of course, I couldn't get any good shots of it because we were, it was all happening so far away. But I was able to watch the whole thing through the lens. Oh, so what is it about? So I'm just coming through now. When I get to this stage, I like to refine the drawing. Now, what's what's important here is that I'm just trying to improve upon what I've got already and not lose the the life of the you know the spontaneity of that I, I got in originally. <laughs> that the 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 struggle to to be spontaneous. I can't tell you how many times I've practiced to be spontaneous. I never should say that don't make no sense. <laughs> that don't make no sense. How many times have you rehearsed to be spontaneous? Aaron, where is the t-shirt from that you're wearing? Carhartt. America's workforce. Carhartt. The working man's clothes. I, uh, I tend to buy a lot of my clothes at Tractor Supply. Aaron, where did you get your art supply bag from? You mentioned it in the stream a long time ago, but I can't remember the website. Lilo Rosh, the best little art bag you'll ever get. L I L O R O S H dot com. They are fantastic. And what I like about them, um, first of all, they they create an amazing product, but they're small. It's not a Walmart. It's not a you know giant corporation. They're a they're a a couple in India that came up with this idea and really just did an amazing job pulling it together. And I fell in love with their product years ago. And, um, and I've bought, I bought quite a few of their, of their bags. Some wrong? No, nothing. Good. <clears throat> so what I'm doing now is just, like I said, just trying to get this refined, I keep craving a turkey sandwich. Too bad we don't have any luck. <laughs> Zonji's says, hey, Aaron, how's it going, eh? Hey, Zonji. My mother asked me to send you greetings, and she says, when you go to Africa, maybe check out a uh, herd uh, elephant sanctuary uh, in South Africa. I will check. If we're, in that, if we're in that region, we'll definitely check it out. Yeah, we haven't been to South Africa yet. We got... We were all set to go one time, and then the trip fell through. So. Yeah. We were going to be doing great white cage diving and all mm -hmm. kinds of stuff on that trip. I was so excited. 
and then it didn't happen. There we go. There we go. How polished does our competition entry piece have to be to stand a chance? Well, uh, polished is is subjective, right? I mean, it mm -hmm. it can be loose and still be polished. You know, it can be you know still. I plan on doing this somewhat loose. I want to keep it dynamic. I think you're more interested in the. I'm more interested in the idea the 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 way that you put it together the way that you portray it it's not strictly making a pretty picture but that part of the draftsmanship is definitely part of it yeah i want to see i want to see a real thought to how the anatomy might work you've got over two weeks to enter so take your time with it and... entry deadline is december 14th reach your teacher.com slash map for details Uh, what is the deadline for the contest? It is December 4th. <laughs> what? Nick, just just literally 10 seconds before you just said that, gave the deadline. <laughs> I, I, I'm wondering if you're having a hard time hearing. Because I was t talking to you the other day and you didn't oh. hear anything. And I'm not, I'm, I'm just literally, maybe we should get your hearing checked. Or I'm just reading through all all the comments, and I just oh, that could be. Else out. It's like your grandfather. He's um. We're getting to that point. I want to be checking hearing. He um, you're, for all the years playing in the band, boy, he's lost all of his uh, high end. He can't hear anything high end. We had a a whole flock of these um. Whistling tree ducks fly over several times and they make this really high pitched squeaky, almost like they sound like a squeaky toy, but they're loud, but it sounds just like a squeaky toy and he can't hear them at all. And it's so plain to hear. It's what's crazy. What'd you say? <laughs> Uh, here's a question on Twitch. Can we combine more than two animals and we can we combine human features as well? I would say yeah. Don't go nuts. You want it to have some kind of but I mean I don't want to I don't want to hobble you right off the bat. So yeah, yeah, go for it. Yeah, the rules say a minimum of two or more. So it can be and as far as if you want to make it combine it with a human, like a centaur minotaur thing or whatever, go for it. Yeah, which I I used to love drawing, by the way. Minotaurs or centaurs or both? Minotaurs, well, both, but minotaurs, minotaurs, minotaurs. I think I've got one in the. Actually, didn't I do one? Hold on, I don't know if it's in the. Uh, I know it's in the book. Yeah, I think there's one in the concept art gallery. I'm not sure. I haven't updated that gallery, but I need to. Let's see. Oh, there it is. Boom. That's my minotaur. Minotaur, 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 minotaur. Oh, 
The what? Oh, yeah. Are those the campers I hear out there? We live about a hundred yards from a uh, um, a campground. I never realized that. Yeah. On certain nights, you can hear them really partying it up out there. It's funny. Uh, is a background required? I would say no, right? I would say no. You don't have to. I it, a background helps. I'm going to be putting a background in here, but it's going to be pretty rough. But I mean, I mean, ultimately, you're whatever they decide to do with their art is up to them. We're not. Gonna, yeah. We're not going to say, oh, there's no background, so therefore it doesn't stand a chance. Absolutely not. Right. I mean, we'll say that secret. <laughs> no, just kidding. There's no background required. I played in a band forever. Uh, too, Dustin, don't turn the amps up too loud. I wasn't the one that was playing the band. <laughs> I've never, I've never played in the band. I hardly ever went to a concert. Well, I went to a couple of concerts when I was younger, but it was in Dad Marshall. Yes. Dad is My dad. years young. 82. 82 years young. Yep. Where you said 83 the other day. That's right. I did say 83 the other day. I got I got ahead of myself. I got ah. Uh-huh. Uh, do you have any tips to slow down making art and not to work too fast to get or and get too messy? Yes, slow down. <laughs> Simple as that. You'll find a balance. Just I, I like to 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 be quick and spontaneous. And then I slow down to get, you know, the, uh, what do I, know? what do I want in his mouth? Then I slow down, you know, to get the, uh, the details and whatnot. Can the art we submit for the giveaway be uh, 3D or does it have to be 2D? No, it can be, a, I just want a, a compelling piece of art, so it could be 3D. Absolutely. Absolutely. For those who are joining late, I want to let you know that we've got our Black Friday sale going on over at FeatureArtTeacher.com. Everything is on sale across the board. We've got everything is 40% up or more. We've got stuff that's all the way up to 80% off, including our uh, character design course and acting for animation course and our really popular Procreate course. Story courses, all of the brushes are just one dollar. The brush sets, rather, so you get some of those sets, you're getting a couple hundred brushes for a buck. Um, we've got uh, two new courses uh, available today for pre order uh, one from David Coleman, uh, it's a drawing class, drawing class, drawing with life, energy, and story. And we've got a new visual development course up for pre order from Armand Serrano. Both of those are 50% off. Uh, Go this weekend uh, to patreonteacher.com because these are the best deals of the year. And on Tuesday, we've got a new course in ZBrush, Making Monsters, that comes out. Uh, that's coming out from uh, Tony Cipriano, his third class with us, and his second ZBrush class. And it's uh, going to be phenomenal. So uh, check it out. Yeah. But he said... <laughs> Were you hitting the slides and all that, Justin? Pardon? Were you hitting the slides when he was mentioning the courses? Uh, no, sorry. I was looking through the comments. You missed all that? Click through them again. Show them the, show them the different courses. Yes. There's... And 
Oops. I'm just messing with local color right now. Aaron, what'd you do for Thanksgiving? Well, see, it's like this. I didn't do a whole lot. Vedanta did everything. Vedanta was amazing. And uh, Nick's wife, Selena, did amazing. The ladies cooked so much food. The only thing I did was carve the turkey. And prep the squash. Ah, come on. Uh, did you see ostriches and flamingos in Kenya? Oh, we saw ostriches, but no flamingos. No flamingos. We weren't we weren't near the lakes for any of the flamingos. Yeah, fling, the flamingos are more further south, right? Yeah, they're in the lake. They're further west as well. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Lake Victoria. Any chance you'll ever do a soft pastel course? Um, there's a chance. But uh, soft pastel is not a forte of mine. But there is a chance. Um, I just, uh, I don't, you know, I don't know that I know any artists that specialize in soft pastel. That's a good question, actually. I know you answered this uh, uh, question earlier, but for the latecomers, does this creature uh, master contest need to have a background? Well, we just, Nick just answered that as well. Literally 10 seconds ago? Uh, about five minutes ago. Um, no, it does not need to have a background, although it should have, you know, it should be putting your best foot forward. I'm going to try putting a background in this one. What a, what a background setting rules require. No. But backgrounds do help give a sense of place and environment. Mm -hmm. and, Uh, which one of Milk Hall's uh, animation works do you think was was his best? Um, that's interesting. That's a good. That's a good question. You know, every film he did it was a masterpiece. I always felt. Um, he was really getting his Milk Hall little head twirl thing really down because he did it all the time in Robin Hood. But, um, you know, the human characters and 101 Dalmatians, Jim Darling and all that, he, that was him. He didn't even do the butler in uh, the Aristocats. I'm sure he did, yeah. Because I think he does that twist 
<laughs> no, it wasn't the... He was always the guy that got assigned to, you know, the adult human characters. And he always kind of complained about it because he wanted the fun characters, but no one else could do realistic humans like him. And so he always got relegated to doing that. And he he really kind of resented it a little bit. Or so the legend goes. Or so the legend goes, exactly. I never knew him. Yeah, you were too busy hanging around with Walt. You didn't get a chance. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Do you think the type of it lays eggs or live birth? Live birth eggs. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> uh, have you used uh, alcohol markers before? Just brought some... Uh... No, just straight up alcohol. Man, we had some of that last night. <laughs> No, I, yeah, I've used alcohol markers. We're gonna, you know what? I need some tail reference. Some crocodile tail reference. Uh, if we, la, 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 if we're there you go. Look, look at that. Bingo. Contents. Uh, will we be able to keep using our piece for our portfolios and on social media, or do you guys own the rights to it after that? Say that again? What? Uh, if we are selected as a winner for the contest, uh, will we be able to keep using our uh, winning piece for uh, our portfolios and on social media, or do you guys own the rights to it after oh, that? Oh, totally, I totally own everything. <laughs> no, you won't be able to use it anymore. <laughs> He's joking. Of course, you'll be able to use it. Yeah, we have. We don't want to own your art. No, no. This is just a contest. You have. You can do whatever you want with your art. <laughs> we don't want your art. Ew! Get out of here. <laughs> no, we're really looking forward to seeing all the entries. But yeah, we don't. I think people get a little too worried about copyright. We have no interest in. Yeah. People. Yeah, people do really get hung up on copyright. Stop. Stop it. So many people think someone's going to steal their image or uh, someone's going to own their image. No, it's yours. And no one wants to steal it. Has it happened to some people in some cases? It has, but it's Is not it as... likely? No. It's not as common as people think. It's sort of like worrying about being struck by lightning. Yeah. Could it happen? Sure. Ah, there we go. That's what I was looking for. Look at that. Are you looking forward to the new Pencilish, Pencilish Studios projects? I am. I wish those guys all the luck in the world. Is that a gator tail? That is a gator tail. That's a photo I took a few years ago. And uh, but it's right at the right angle. I like that angle. Well, it's not exactly the right angle, but close enough. I like it. What beer was on the bar last night? Well, there was a little bit of vodka, a little bit of wine, a little bit of uh, whiskey. Whiskey. Was anyone drinking beer? Uh, there were some Yinglings. Oh yeah, there's there's some Yinglings. Hey, Aaron, is a metronome necessary to learn traditional animation? No, I've never used a metronome. A metronome is only going to give you a steady beat. All you, all you have for when you're with animation, you've got the ability to look at your frame count. Just do the same number of frames within an action and you get a beat. I've actually never even heard of trying to use a metronome for animation. Yeah, some guys get really kind of over analytical and they'll... Talk about, yes, you should use this to understand timing and blah, blah, blah. I mean, I could see where you might use a metronome if you were trying to make an X sheet from dialogue, but like... Yeah, but even then, you're still counting frames. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. But I don't know why you would need it in the actual development side. You know, like, I, like I, No, you don't need it. I don't think you do. Now, there are people that would argue with me, and oh, which do. is fine, because I'm used to it. Everybody argues with me. No one listens to me. I do not. <laughs> what, what were you saying? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. 
No respect. Nobody gives me the respect I need. I'm going to knock that back a little bit. I'm kind of digging this little guy. Yeah, having, neat idea. Having fun with it. Oops. Oops. I've lost my line. Oh, no. Oh dear. Oh yeah. Erica Bay says, I am digging this creature. Thanks, Erica. Hope you and Frankie had a great holiday. Hey, what's on that easel behind you? Oh, leopard. By the way, uh, I'll show you right here. I got a picture of it. Oh, I guess I don't. Uh, it's up here. It's up here, 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 here. So this image right here, boom, bang, right there. That, uh, this is a charcoal that I did several live streams back. What, what was it, maybe five live streams back? I did this live. And um, we're going to offer this as a print next week yeah. on Cyber Monday. Cyber Monday, this Monday, we're going to have a limited number of signed and numbered Limited number of signed and numbered. <laughs> Limited edition run of signed and numbered prints of this uh, charcoal drawing. So uh, I think the run is going to be a hundred. So we will. Uh, yeah, we'll have one hundred of these signed and numbered, and uh, once they're gone, they're gone forever. Yeah, how detailed is that image? Like, like we were like really zoom in, like get the texture out. Okay. Oh yeah, because Dustin wants to show off his 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 uh, camera. There. Go any more than that, it's going to be. Yeah. But there it is. Look at that. Ooh. Nice texture. Gorgeous. But so we'll have a print of this available next week, and um, I like this one. This is I, I this one I uh, I was really happy with how this one came out. So there you go. Back to one step beyond. There we go. There it is. So now I want to, I know it's been, it's kind of an afterthought. But I want to get the bank working in here. Uh, do you have a favorite uh, piece you've done and which one is it if you did? Or if you Not did. really. I don't really have a favorite piece. Like, do they mean like a favorite piece of all time? Is that what they're asking? Yeah. Most artists I know, it's usually whatever one they're working on at the moment. Yeah, I like this one. They're really excited for it for about <laughs> a day, and then they're on to the next thing. They don't think about it ever again. It's really, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's really true. Chew on a bone. I wasn't I'm not quite sure yet. What is that supposed to be hang? Is that supposed to be something hang out of the mouth? Yeah, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna put anything there now or not. Put some darkness back here. That's all gonna be dark. Dark, dark, dark. Yeah.
Nate. I do my dramatic shadows on him. Go a little darker, dark, dark, dark. The local color. Oh, I didn't like that. You ever have days where you feel like you just can't draw? Yep. But that they just have to push through those days. You just got to push through them. Because they will happen and bite you in the butt all the time. But you just roll with it. My mama told me there'd be days like that. Yeah, there'd be days like that my mama told me. Why didn't you color the croc's eyes? I haven't gotten to it yet. Stop being so impatient. <laughs> okay, here you go. I'm just the messenger. I know. Aaron, Nick, what live event is next on the card? You know, it's funny you say that. Um, we were going to do one uh, in two weeks, but we... We, we just... We haven't gotten to it yet. We got a lot of stuff on the plate. So it's looking uh, either late December or early January. Late December, back in 63. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, we'll be announcing our next live event <laughs> very soon. So uh, we're not going to spoil it right now. But uh... but I'm not sure if they're... Are they talking about internet live event or are they talking about workshop? Well, that's a good question. Because... Uh, I don't know when our next workshop will be, but I want to do a watercolor thing here in Florida. Something a little simpler for us to pull off. I know it's not easy for some of you folks. We are going to do stuff, get back to doing workshops in Europe and other parts of the country. But while everything is still kind of getting rolling from COVID, I figure we can take it easy and do something here. <laughs> Take it easy. Don't let the sound of your own paintbrush drive you crazy. Is it possible to see all the entries from the last contest? No. <laughs> it is not. Sorry, uh, there's just two. We don't have them set up in a way that we can display them, and there is over 460 of them. Yeah, and plus, that's not. Yeah, and I, I know that there aren't, don't necessarily want it viewed by everybody in the world. We don't own the copyright, as we said earlier. We yeah, so we don't really have the ability to do that. But thanks for asking. And uh, will the live stream be recorded? Yes, it will be recorded on uh, YouTube and Facebook. And Facebook, yep. Perfect. Yeah, Facebook is also recorded. And Twitter. Uh, <laughs> you guys feeling still feeling full from yesterday? No. Fully digested. I'm ready to eat a horse. I'm ready for more. Okay. Uh, internet workshops? Uh, question mark? Is that with a question, yeah, mark? With a question mark? Yeah, we do. Uh, we occasionally try to do about three or four a year. We do um, workshops uh, a full, for a full day over the internet. Um, you tune in through uh, a portal on the website and uh, you, uh, you sign up ahead of time and um, uh, and we we do it and it's a lot of fun. Gerardo on YouTube says, hey, I've already purchased the Africa Bundle photo pack and I gotta say the photos are beautiful. Thanks for this resource, guys. Hey, it's all Dustin. You are hey. welcome. And Nick. Nick pulled it all together. What are your thoughts about the upcoming new movie, Lightyear? Oh, I, well, from the trailer that I saw, I love the look of it. 
Yeah, definitely looking forward to that. I mean, it's, it is weird seeing Buzz as a real person and not a toy. I mean, it kind of goes but, against the whole, the whole, uh, but unless that's the, it's the story of Buzz the toy. Yeah. Because you're supposed to think of him as real, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, but yeah, it looks really, really good. Well, I think the conceit of the movie is that the toy is based on a real astronaut or something, right? That's the idea. Well, I have no idea. A real astronaut, or I think it's like a, um, I know there was a side. I know there was a um, Disney animated show of Lightyear. Right. Um, oh, was there? Yeah. It was, it was, it was 2D. It was hand drawn, I believe. Huh? It was a 2D one, right? Yeah, 2D animated. Yeah. So it might be like a prologue to that. But I'm not entirely sure. But either way, the visuals for this new one just looks amazing. So right now I'm just laying in some local color texture. <clears throat> uh, did I already ask about the uh, Netherlands? The Netherlands? Uh, are you planning workshops in Netherlands? Uh, not currently, no. We're not. But I'm sh I can see us being in the Netherlands quite, quite easily. We'll probably end up in Denmark uh, at some point for a workshop. I can see us doing something with um, and I'm just assuming we've done stuff with Animation Workshop and Vborg before, and I'd love to do something with them again. If you're listening. Hello. 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 Hey, Hello. All right. So we've got, we're roughing this in. Roughing it in, roughing it in, coming in along, but okay, let's do, let's do it. Let's see here. We all ready to move. What story or story type would you like to put into um, an animated film? Um, I've got several different story ideas that I don't want to share, but, um, I've got some, uh, I've got a few of them actually. I, I mean, I, I don't want to do anything, you know, that pushes any kind of taste boundaries. I'm not looking to do quote adult animation. I would, I love sticking with family entertainment. That's always been my forte. Although I'm not totally against, like, if I had an opportunity to do something with uh, Love, Robots, Death, and whatever the hell it is. Love, Death, and Robots? Yeah. <laughs> didn't you actually have an opportunity to do that, and it just the schedule didn't line up or something? Uh, I, I don't, I'm not quite sure if that was they legit. Who, who knows if it was legit? I don't know. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I have just, and even some of that is like, come on, you know, do you have to go there? for the story it's I mean, some of it's just gratuitous i think and trust me i'm not you know i'm not the what is it I good, good taste police <laughs> i think they did hold back just a little bit in the in the second scene i haven't gone through it all So right now I'm laying in shadows. Uh, what will your next traditional media course be? And will you do uh, the primate course? Yes, we will do a primate course. Um, I don't know what my next traditional media course will be. Oh, that's here's a, a follow-up on the metronome. Thing. That's a good question. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, go ahead. Follow up on the metronome thing. I was asking about the metronome because I'm due to start with Don Bluth University in a few days, and that's one of the things that's actually on my shopping list that they gave me. There you go. Well, I am curious to see what, how Don, how they teach that. Really, I'm very curious because I've never used it. Not once in my career have I ever used a metronome. 
or used it as a learning aid. And I'm not, that is by no means me saying you shouldn't have it because it's just, I'm just saying I've never used it because I have nothing but respect for Don Bluth. Man, this is fun. I'm enjoying this one. I really wanted to get that crocodile from the front. I'm glad I decided to. I stick. think this crocodile rocks. <laughs> <laughs> I know you answered this on a previous stream, but have you seen Arcane? And if so, did you like it? I loved it. Yeah, I've only gone through the first couple of episodes, but I'm liking, I'm liking it so far. Oh, it's a series, not a movie. I don't yeah. Know about a movie. Yeah, it's a series. Hmm. Erica says Don Bluth actually uses the metronome quite a bit. I took a workshop from his back in the day. I'd be curious to see how they use it. I really would. Miyazaki uses a stopwatch. What would that be for? Stopwatch is just getting a general time for something so that you can break that down according to frames. Yeah, I mean, basically the idea, right, is you say, oh, that took me 10 seconds to walk across the room. Right. And if you know that, then you know the general number of frames it's going to take. Uh, what's the difference between full and limited animation? Limited animation is a technique when your budget is kind of low and you don't have the time or the budget for lots of artists to do full drawings uh at 24 frames per second it's just a lot of drawing when when you're doing full animation so you literally are limiting it you're finding ways to economize on first of all the number of drawings so maybe you don't do 24 drawings per second maybe you do uh six drawings per second you know on fours or you do you know 12 drawings on twos if you can afford cycled that cycled backgrounds like the old school flintstone exactly cycled backgrounds you'll do held cells where a body might be held but the face is still animating so you don't have to draw the 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 whole body over and over so there's a lot of different ways of of doing limited animation and it really boils down to like i said budget it's trying to figure out where you can economize and um and spend less money. There's like a lot of, um, like a lot of, a lot of cartoons are very limited. Animation. Yeah. Yeah. Animation, animation shows like, say, Ed and Eddie or uh, Johnny Bravo. It's a, it's another prime one. But yeah, and and to be honest with you, I mean, even even in full animation, um, when we get put a sequence into like at Disney, when we would be there, um we put a sequence into production, we would still go through it, see where we could save money. Um, I think a prime example, I've used this before, you know, when we were doing Brother Bear and we discovered that we were about, we were a couple hundred thousand dollars over budget on, uh, in a few areas. And we were needing to kind of see where we could save money. And so one of the things was we were at the salmon run and we, as we went through the salmon run, we realized that all these characters were, you know, conversing and running around and splashing. And that was a lot of water effects that we had to do. And we realized that a lot of the shots, if we just framed them up where the characters are conversing with each other and frame the water out, but still carry the water with sound effects and maybe an occasional splash up in the air here and there, um, we could save a lot of money. And that's what we did. Um, and so you'll see... Uh, if you ever watch Brother Bear again, when you get to the salmon run, look at how many of the shots actually where you don't see the water. And that's why we did that, so that we could get back on budget. Actually, uh, trivia. What, what, oh, sorry, go ahead. Nope. Oh, oh, I was just going to say on that topic, a trivia thing is you actually brought Brother Bear in under budget, correct? 
Yeah, we ended up bringing it in. Uh, ultimately, at the end of the day, we brought the movie in under budget. Which is one of the only times that's ever happened. Yeah. Right? And I'm sure they issued that difference to you with the bonus, right? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Matter of fact, when the when the movie broke two hundred mil or a uh, hundred and fifty million worldwide, they they took us out to lunch and i was like oh cool they're gonna take us out to lunch and they took us out to lunch to tell us hey don't get cocky we're not giving you any bonuses i swear that's exactly <laughs> what it was for Good and we we weren't even we had no we had no plans on asking for a bonus because it wasn't i mean i just know disney and it wasn't in the contract so don't ask Uh, what will the topic of uh, Mandy's course be? Uh, sketchbook, uh, sketchbook drawing. Yeah, it's going to be sketchbook drawing. Um, we're really excited about it. Kind of keeping a field journal. He's got a really neat approach to that. Yeah. I think he's probably going to throw in a little animal tracking in there. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, will you do a gouache course? I love your. Oh, course. you know what? That's a great one. Yeah, have, did you do a gouache or I've done a gouache demonstration. I wouldn't say that I'm an expert at gouache, although I, you know, gouache to me is like acrylic. I treat oh, it the that's same way. And I actually, we don't have an acrylic course. Huh? We don't have an acrylic course. We don't. Well, we no. we have a watercolor course, don't we? Yeah, we got the watercolor course. But my my point is, actually, do I want to do a shadow over the top like I always do, and drive? Tell me what you think of this if I do this. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on a minute. I don't know. Oh, your your old fashioned shadow? Yeah, of him coming out of the shadows like the whole river was in the shadows. And he's coming out. Maybe some dappled light on it. You think that's what do you think? Maybe. I'm trying to not pick up my I'd have to come down here on the ground as well. I kinda yeah, like I that's the only thing that um I kind of like that because I can get the dappled light on the on the shore. Do dappled light on his. Like if I do this, like it's a tree. Yeah. But another thing though is that uh, when it comes to his body himself, I really think they should continue the color of the the crocodile color. Oh, down the back. Yeah, over the back like this. Like yeah. Just over that, and then make it gradient along like the. Yeah, I agree. The ribs. Yeah, right along there. Okay. Yeah. I'll take that. Because it's just kind of weird how there's the tail, head, and then. Okay, I get it. I get it. You don't have to drive it home. <laughs> well, he hasn't finished painting. I actually like it the way it is now. I think if you do too much green, it's going to look. No, I think I think just along the the back. Yeah. Well, I think I think that's a a good compromise. I agree with the too much. If you do it too much. But what I'm gonna need to do here is I want to get Here's this. Here's a YouTube off. question: Should the tail color continue along the spine towards the head? <laughs> is that really? Yeah. <laughs> On YouTube? Yeah. Uh, I didn't even read that comment. <laughs> no, it just came in. So. But it came in right before. Wow. That's funny. What a coincidence. Uh, Facebook question. It helps unify the whole thing. Facebook question for me: Did you enjoy the new Ghostbusters? Yes, I did very much. Go see it on the big screen. I was going to ask you that, so stay on the <laughs> Move quicker. <laughs> One at a time. That's funny. Yeah, yeah you been... guys saw it together, right? Yeah. Yeah. We did the, the 4D. Nick and I spent so much time together. Yeah, we did. What I wouldn't necessarily do again as we saw we saw it on a 4dx screen oh my where, gosh where the seats move and their motion and some of it was cool but it was on a most of it wasn't it was just too much 
Like, there were parts where it was really neat, and I'm not going to spoil the movie, but there's ghosts in it, just so you guys know. Oh, no. (laughs) You know, when ghosts would come out and there'd be smoke, it would be cool because then they would bring smoke into the theater. And there were certain times when, um, uh, you know, like, exciting action would happen and neat stuff would happen and you could get wind and the seats would move. And there was times when it was really cool. There's also times when it was really subtle, like, you know, they would do a camera pan and it would give you kind of a drifting sensation. And that was really neat. Uh, I preferred the subtle to the, uh, to the really over the top stuff. But then like Aaron said, there was also just times like they would slam a door or, you know, a door would close and they would vibrate your seat for no reason. And it was just like, yeah, they were trying to find ways to work in it. So love the movie. Not a huge fan of 40X at the time. I'm sure with we'll time they'll improve on that theater. <laughs> I thought it was a new thing, but it's been out for like ten years. So. Oh, has it? Yeah. Where is the forty theater at? It's next to that. International uh, Drive. International Drive, all that other uh, by Universal. Oh, it's literally right next door to that building that's upside down, like the upside down uh, Wonder Wonder oh, Works. Works. Yeah. yeah. Right next door to that. Uh, Eric of uh, Bane votes. Uh, I voted for Dappled Light. Dappled Light, yeah. One of the things I'm going to do now is jump back to my shadows and here. What am I doing? The eraser. I need to change my eraser. Uh, let me change it to this one. Uh, who did uh, Lumiere, Cogsworth, and Mrs. Potts scene with time to be to be gentle and kind to Mel and all that? You know what I'm talking about? I'm trying to remember who animated it. I was going to death team to join during for dinner. Oh, okay. Well, Lumiere was uh, Nick Ranieri. Uh, and um cogsworth was um will finn will finn also animated iago um what what other characters oh Uh, chip mrs potts mrs potts oh that was um oh my gosh i can't remember his name forgot his name than the ones you are Yeah. Did you stuff yourself with uh, turkey? Wait, I thought turkey got stuffed. Um, I had well, quite a bit of turkey, but I mostly had quite a bit of uh, mac and, the mac and cheese. The mac and cheese is delicious. It's homemade mac and cheese. In Badanta made it. <laughs> that was good. Model war. Then, uh, but after the dinner, we also I also had a few pieces of um, uh, the Oreo truffles that uh, Jesse and I made together. Uh, it's her specialty, and uh, but I helped out. And they're grinded down Oreos uh, mixed in with cream cheese to keep it together, dipped in. Keep it together, uh, folks. That's all. Keep it together. Keep it together. Uh, I think it was like, I, I think the last thing I saw was like one or two left, but even then, I think they're all gone. I think the two kids had it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the video grab one, but it's like, oh, yeah. The rotten kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who is the uh, guest today on today's live stream? That is. Jesse, my good friend Jesse from uh, Georgia, came down to visit. Yeah, hi, Jesse. Hello. Wait, hold on. Where am I? Oh, yeah. Hello. I'm over here drawing as well. <laughs> All right, we're going to do another layer. This one I'm going to set to overlay. Now, I'm having fun with this. I'm going to tell you. 
Uh, for those who might be joining us late, it's probably a good time to mention that this is, we're doing, the reason that you're doing an animal hybrid today is because we are doing our next art challenge presented by our friends over at cashforyourmac.com. And they are giving away, uh, they've donated to us to give away rather, uh, another iPad Pro. Yes. Uh, so if you go to- it's so, it's so cool of them to do that. Yeah. So if you go to creatureartteacher.com slash Mac, uh, you can read all the rules, but basically the gist of it is we want you to come up with your own animal mashups or hybrids or chimeras or whatever you want to call them. And uh, you have until December 14th uh, to submit your entries. And then uh, we're going to pick the winner and on December 17th, which is that following Friday in a live stream. I think that's three weeks from now. Uh, we'll be announcing the winner here live on the, uh, on the uh, stream and, uh, We'll probably do like last time where we'll go through some of the uh, uh, images on the live stream and announce the winner. If you go back and watch last week's live stream, you'll see who won, who won our last iPad Pro. Uh, so yeah, it's creatureartteacher.com slash Mac for details. By the way, did you say Chimera? Mm-hmm. I think it's pronounced Chimera. Oh, yeah, you're it, probably right. It's either, it's either, <laughs> I think it goes either way. I've heard it pronounced both, so... And also, uh, that is using a couple of reference images from a brand new wildlife pack. Yeah. The Africa Wildlife Pack with over 1,400 brand new high quality images. And they are available now. Well, high quality is, that's, you know, huh? that's subjective. And it's really, they're, 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 <laughs> they're images. They're definitely we'll definitely give you images. Yeah. About 1,400 <laughs> beautiful images. We're, and, uh, we're pulling your leg there, Dustin. <laughs> but uh, be sure to go over there and check, check them out. And yes, it's by far the largest pack we've had on the site thus far. Yeah, you did you did an amazing job with that photography. Thank that you. their photography that you do. Yeah, it really, it really did push my limits and really push me to uh, take those away that like I hardly ever do like shooting in the rain is the biggest one shooting in the rain shooting in the rain shooting beyond 800 ISL which is something I rarely to never ever do in fact a like, couple of shots especially the cheetah and lions in the rain was like lions in the rain 5,000 to 6,400 ISL which is quite up there but they came out beautifully. Man. There we go. Uh, is there a max or a limit to how many animals you can mix for the hybrid? I don't want you mixing any more than 53. <laughs> oh, my God. I was thinking more, no more than seven. <laughs> There's no limit. You have to use at least two. Yep. Using extra animals doesn't score any extra points. No. Make sure it's clear. You know, dumb joke on Twitch. If this animal was originally an alligator whose body changed due to a mutation, would that be considered a reptile dysfunction? <laughs> oh. That was great. Oh, I, oh, I, uh, oh, oh, oh. that was very nice. That was good. I'll give you that. That was good. <laughs> Marcus, so, the, so this new reference pack is the birds of prey chorus of the reference packs? Since, yes. <laughs> yes, it's birds of prey chorus is like one of the biggest ones, right? Yeah, for no particular reason other than <laughs> I like birds of prey. And I like Africans. There we go. That feels good. Like that? Yeah. Not feeling better? Yeah, it looks better. I feel fun. better all the time. All right, so I'm going to put a layer on top here. We'll start working right on top. Now we're going to start putting the finishing touches on.
Uh, do we stick with uh, modern creatures or um, only, or can we incorporate extinct ones? You can incorporate anything you want. So like a T-Rex mixed in with a bear? Yep. I just want it to be convincing. God, can you imagine a bear with a T-Rex head? <laughs> uh, hold on. Yes. <laughs> What? Oh, oh, that. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's, what, that's what, like a horse with a dog's mouth? Yeah. Yeah. Terrifying. I've seen those pictures. Oh, they God. look they look like demons. They did. Like, try to catch a horse that can literally punch your face off. Shelly wrote, don't mention Snowbear. There's enough on his plate to check on. It looks like a, somebody actually threw that same thing. It looks like a dragon or cyber. <laughs> Can you mix extinct animals as well for the challenge? Right? Oh, see, Dustin just asked that. <laughs> oh, they asked it on you on YouTube. So there you go. <laughs> Stay out of my territory. Stay out of my territory. <laughs> Who is the best James Bond? Um. You asked this. You already said Jan, uh, Sean Connery. I did. Why are we getting that question again? I still go back and forth, you know, because we we got into this whole thing of like Roger Moore was the James Bond I grew up with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Pierce Brosnan I grew up with, but. Man, Daniel Craig just He was awesome. Yeah, he blew this he blew James Bond out of the water on uh, his series. And I like how his version is a continuous story. Like all these other past James, past Bond films, not many of them have yeah. a continuous story. Did you watch the latest one? I have not. I haven't seen it yet. It's still in theaters, right? Yep. It's but it's out on uh, you can it's on oh, it's on HBO streaming. No, no, yeah, no you, you can, can you can pay for it, you can pay to rent it, yeah, rent, oh, it, rent, rent it, yeah. It's one of the best Bond films I've ever seen, I think. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, so far, I think my favorite, uh movie because it's, it has one of my favorite scenes has to be Spectre because of the big uh, reveal of the villain in the giant meeting hall. I just liked how large and grand that yeah. place felt and just loved uh, this, the lack thereof of the sound. You just feel the tension in the room. Yeah. Truth. Truth. Uh, Mandy Lee says, I live in Canada and haven't received my books yet. Anticipation is killing me. Uh, do you have an, esti an estimation for postage time? Depends on when you ordered it. We are filling them in the order that they come. Yeah, we're, we're filling out the orders in the order that they were ordered. <laughs> so if you've gotten a shipping notice, you're going to get a shipping notice when we go to ship it. So Canada, it seems to be taking about a week to get it from the time that we ship it. So somewhere in there, but can't make any guarantees with the holidays and the larger volumes. And, you know, but uh, it'll be coming soon. We're about halfway through, a little less. Uh, from Jade Price, how long did it uh, take for Glenn Keane to work out the design for the beast, like working out how to mix the different creatures together? A couple months. A couple months? Yeah. And some of the final ones were, was uh, wolf and bear? Buffalo. Buffalo. He had a big stuffed mounted buffalo head in his office. They picked up at like a, a garage sale. Yeah, yeah uh, 
Yeah, the beast giant hump on his back. That's based off of the bison. Isn't yeah. It? Right. And there was wild boar in there and From the test. wolf. Hey Aaron, well, when will we uh, see a room tour for your new of your new house? Never. <laughs> we wish to keep that. Right. We did a studio tour already on a yeah. previous live stream, so we'll probably do another studio tour uh, coming up. Right now, my office is an absolute mess. Lots of uh, cameras and lights and wires. And there's and a lot of a lot of stuff. It's everywhere. a typical artist's room. Yeah. Organized chaos. <laughs> Glorious organized chaos. Uh, what? Which kind of penguin species is your favorite? <laughs> which kind of penguin species? Yeah, that's a very random question. Emperor, emperor penguin? Are those the ones in um, Antarctica? They're all in, most of them are in Antarctica. All penguins are Southern Hemisphere. Although, you do get penguins in the Galapagos Islands, which is pretty much on the equator, but they don't cross the equator. But I like yeah, Emperor and, and uh, King. The ones with the golden eyebrows? Yeah. Yeah, let's see. Uh, Shelly is asking, hey, is there a hey, hey, what's going on? How's it going, Amy? Uh, is there a super question of the day uh, uh, question? I really like those. We don't have a quality question of the day loaded up. However, if you throw up the graphic, Justin. Yes, there it is. Uh, if you want to see your question asked on a future stream, uh, you can go ahead and uh, either scan the QR code on your screen or visit the URL. Uh, they're working on shortening that up, by the way. But uh, in the meantime, it's, uh, it's up there for you to say to see. And uh, we started this segment a couple weeks ago, and so far it's been going great. And uh, unfortunately, I didn't have one queued up today because of all the Black Friday stuff and everything going on. And, uh, but uh, head on over to cashforyourmac.com at the URL, and we will ask your question on a future stream. We want to see, uh, you know, your quality questions. Plus, it gives you a chance to check them out and uh, see what they've got going on over there. So we'll give people just a few more seconds to scan the code in three. Two, one. They're like, but I'm watching it on my phone. How am I going to scan the? Uh, uh, uh. Uh, everyone, uh, everyone on their TVs and monitors going. What? <laughs> <laughs> if only there was a way to pause the stream. <laughs> uh, what types of owls are in your area? In Florida, like bar we have burrowing owls, we have screech owls, we have barred owls, we have great horned owls. Um, I think I just went down the whole list. Am I missing anything? Great horned, barred. Barred is probably the most common. Screech owls, burrowing owls. Someone's asking on YouTube, can does the does the entry have to be done on a Mac or can it be on a PC? Uh, using a Mac is not a requirement at all. It can be done on an iPad. It can be done traditionally with pencil on paper. There's no requirement that you use a Mac. We're partnered with Cash for Your Mac on this contest because we use Macs and we think they're great tools and they have good prices. But you can use whatever you want. Yep, whatever you want. No requirement. So you get extra points for uh, using a PC. Just kidding. <laughs> Uh, had Glenn Keane worked on Lion King, what character do you think he would have enjoyed animating the most? Mufasa. I was just going to say that. Yeah, for sure. I kept thinking that Glenn Keane was part of a uh, Lion King production. No. Or was he... Uh, no, Glenn Pocahontas? never was. He was full war on Pocahontas. Yeah. That's what it was. Uh... 
uh, what is what a uh, marital eagle? Marital eagle? A what? Uh, Marty Marshall? Eagle? Is that how you... Marshall Eagle? Marshall Eagle? Yeah, well, we saw those in Africa. You had that in your pack. That's a Marshall Eagle. I think it's on the ground. Yeah. I think that's what oh, they're yeah, asking. One, that was a, uh, yeah, unfortunately, it's the only, the only one image I got, but... Yeah. It's, it's something... <laughs> Yeah, uh, are Marshall eagles only in Africa, or are they or are they in other? They may have. They may range up into the Middle East, but I'm pretty sure is um, they're relegated to Africa. Is the African it true Thanksgiving content. is bigger in the U.S. than Christmas? Well, no, no. Christmas kind of invades Thanksgiving, so no, it's not bigger than Christmas. No way. I mean, the Christmas is the biggest hit. holiday of the year. I mean, by the time November hits, like, there's no Thanksgiving decorations. It's all Christmas decorations before even Thanksgiving starts. Oh, yeah. I mean, they have Christmas decorations up before Halloween's. Yeah. In the store. Or like the day of Halloween. They're, they're already setting them up. Yeah. By the end of September, they have the whole Christmas decorations. Yeah, the moment November starts, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. I'm a sucker for Christmas. I happen to love it. So I, I, to me, it's like I'm I'm the guy that gave you all that. I'm the guy that's like, stay in your month. <laughs> <laughs> the turkey yelling at Dana. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, they did. Uh, you ever see that guy Ryan George on uh, YouTube? He did a whole funny bit all about the months of the calendar and it's all the holidays and that's exactly Christmas December is like hey. it just keeps invading. <laughs> hey if you don't like the word animations as a plural for animation, what term do you think should be used? Animation. You, you take the S off. Yeah, that's what it's there is no S. It's it's like fish. You don't say fishes. Or moose. You don't say mooses. Somehow or another, that started in like the... When did that start? In the 90s? What, or late mooses? 90s? Animations. Oh, animations? Yeah, I mean, nobody said animations. I don't even think until the 2000s. Or maybe that's when it was. When I started When I started in the industry, there was no such word as animations, plural. Got so when I first heard it, I said... I remember thinking, oh man, they really screwed that up. And then I heard it again. And I heard it again. I'm like, what? In Florida, do you have long eared owls too? No. No, they're northern. Actually, I could be wrong. We might have long eared owls, like, uh, but I don't think we do. Uh, who animated. Uh... The Colors of the Wind sequence in uh, uh, Pocahontas. Uh, Glenn animated Pocahontas. Well, pretty much. Pocahontas I, did, I did animate Pocahontas. I, you know, it's really weird. I've got this weird selective memory. Every movie I've worked on, I can remember a lot of the animation I did. I can't think of a single shot. And I, I worked on Pocahontas for nine months. I can't think of a single shot that I animated. You probably would if you sat down and watched it, though. Yeah, probably. Because um, it was such I, a flash in the pan. I think I remember you told me a shot that you did of her and Miko coming through the bushes or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Well, that. one of the 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 shot that they actually used as a cell for the employees was actually my animation. It was a shot that I animated, but I just don't remember doing it. Would you ever animate a short with a spider in it? Sure. I don't know. I thought the moment I heard that I just, or read that, I just started thinking Lucas the Spider. I love Lucas. Oh, it's so freaking cute. <laughs> uh, 
I love Lucas. He lives on the second floor. My name is Lucas. Uh, deers bothers me when people use it as yeah. plural for deer. Yeah, well, it's just not, it's not a word, right? So it's the same with the animations. There's a lot of deers out there. Animating eight lights would be difficult, right? Yes. It just depends on the uh, the size of the speed. Once you understand the pattern, it's not bad. But animating insects, arachnids, all that, yeah, it's a, it's. It's just more work, right? Yeah. That's right. Whenever I'm thinking spiders, I'm always thinking of the, the movie Eight Legged Freaks. Yeah. Here's a uh, Twitch comment following up what we were just talking about a little bit ago. Just speculating here, but I think it may come from the computer animation industry. For instance, when I build a video game character, it might have four different idle, quote, animations to randomly choose between when a character stands still. Yeah, but even then, you call it four different pieces of animation. Right, but that's he should say he thinks it might. Anyway, the point is, he no, I, yeah, I, I get, and I'm pretty sure that's where it came from as well. Yes, I agree with you, but but my argument to that is, I mean, as far as the proper English for it, or at least what I would what I would think is a proper English, because the Lord knows I can't speak proper English, is you'd say, oh yes, this is this is comprised of five five pieces of animation. I think you talk good life. <laughs> uh, Dustin and uh, Nick, if you play video games, uh, do you play Red Dead Redemption 2? I've just bought Xbox version on Black Friday sales, and I'll play it after the stream. Uh, I I have not, I've only played the first one, but I've had, I have friends who play it, and I watch their streams on it, and it looks gorgeous. I have played Red Dead Redemption 2. It's great. Actually, what's amazing in that game is the animals. And our good friend, Darren Bader, who we went to Africa with two years ago, uh, was actually the art director for both of those games. And he uh, made special attention to make sure that the animals were uh, really well done in those games. Um, the whole game is great, the art director, the whole thing. But in particular, the, uh, the animals are great. Yeah, I, I definitely want to get Red Dead Redemption 2. I just haven't found the, the right time to get it. I end up uh, getting other games just get swamped with those. Like the other, like just earlier this month, I got uh, my hands on Forza Horizon 5, which is an amazing open world free roam racing game. And uh, it's set in Mexico. Mexico. And the environments of that place. Oh, so Mexico. Very important question. Did you save? No. Oh, dear. I have not saved yet. Oh, dears. Oh, dears. Uh, from Andy Lee, uh, Aaron, who do you go to for your art questions or guidance, if ever? Um, not too many people nowadays. The mirror. Yes, yeah, the mirror. <laughs> I, uh, nowadays, it's I figure things out. I just figure things out on my own. Well, that's not necessarily true. Usually, it depends on if it's like a technical thing. I mean, we've asked, you know, Tom Moore a question on how to do something in TV paint, for instance, yeah. or, you know. Yeah, technical stuff. Yeah, I can go to anybody that's an expert in that field. But if you're talking about compositional type stuff, that's all. I've kind of gone to the point in my career where I've been doing it for 40 some odd years. I kind of just, I have my own way of doing things now. Not that there's no room for improvement. It's just that I don't. I've I've learned to, I've learned, I've picked up enough tools to figure things out. I get I guess I could say. 
we've got a lot of people that joined us late. I want to let them know that we've got two brand new courses up for pre-order on our website this weekend for Black Friday. First, we've got um, a drawing course from David Coleman, uh, which is available for 50% off on a pre-order special. And he takes you through his whole approach to uh, drawing with energy and life. And then he takes it and shows you how to apply that to storyboard art, character development. He's it's really amazing. Yeah, he's an Emmy Award winning character designer and visual development artist uh, and story artist. So he's definitely one uh, we're really happy to have uh, have courses on our site. The other one that we've got up brand new today is a visual development course with Armand Serrano, who is an amazingly uh, talented uh, uh, artist as well. Concept artist, visual development artist. Uh, used to be a layout artist back at Disney. In fact, he used to work with Aaron and Brother Bear in the layout department. Um, uh, he's worked on Zootopia. He just did a ton of work on Marvel's What If series. He's super in demand all over the industry. Tons of games, Blizzard games, Riot games. Um, anyway, he's an amazing visual development artist. And his class, he takes you through, he takes the story of uh, David and Goliath and kind of develops it, like what it would be like if it was real people and what the props would be like and the tents and the hairstyles and you know he even takes it into virtual reality and does mock-ups and draws over them and it's it's a really neat process and uh it's a huge it's a really cool course that's available so uh, go check that one out they're both up for pre-order now at creatureartteacher.com dot com dot com <laughs> <laughs> Did I make you laugh a little bit? Yeah. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> While you were in Kenya, uh, did you collect uh, any skulls during the night? <laughs> there were so many I wanted to take home. Yeah, there was one particular a couple of a, a couple of hippopotamus skulls I wanted to get. Yeah, there was there was one particular hippo skull that we kept passing back and forth when we were a leopard in the woods. We probably passed that one skull at least five times. And yeah, you were like, I want to get out of the And the, and our, our Maasai guys are like, no, no, that stays there. <laughs> you cannot take skulls from the land. Someone just said, I love these courses, but I can't keep spending on them and taking ages to finish them. They're amazing, though. I wish I could get to them all. <laughs> well, uh, for some people who might not know this, we have an annual membership to our website, which is also on sale and is by far the best deal that we have. And I think the best deal in art education. I completely, not just because it's our site, probably partly because it's our site, but I completely agree. But what's cool about our membership is you get everything that's available on the site, plus everything that comes out for the next year, plus you get to keep it all. So yeah, it's you, not streaming only. If you can't get to it uh, over the course of the year, that's fine. You can do it whenever you want. So the only thing with the membership and the only reason it's an annual membership is because you renew to continue to get the new classes as they come out. And, you know, you know, one of our goals, I'm just going to come out and say it. One of our goals when we started this, uh, I, I got, I was really frustrated with a lot of colleges and um, how much they were, they were charging to go to school there. I really wanted to create a site that um, anybody, anybody in the world could afford. But not only that, um, I was getting frustrated with the, the level, the teaching level uh, in some of the colleges. And this is where, you know, I just want to, come out and say it because i i know there was people teaching certain courses that have never professionally done what they were teaching and that really bothered me and so it became for me a goal to get out and find people that are actually working in the industry to teach the subjects that they are prone at for what they're known for and 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 pick only the best get only the best in the industry 
And so that's what we've done. And I'm really proud of that. So that's my, got off my high horse. <laughs> Uh, when you were in Wyoming in uh, Yellowstone, did you see any um, uh, any animal attacks on on humans? No, no. <clears throat> what? No, that's a extremely extremely rare. Yeah, bird. no. I mean, we saw some people get pretty darn close to some buffalo. That yeah, it shouldn't have, and you know, people being idiots. I've seen a yeah, one one guy got people being idiots with, with close to bears. bears. Or, yeah. yeah, that's just people being dumb. But no, you don't. We didn't see anybody beyond that. Hey, can you tell me about the scrapped character from Brother Bear named Grizz? He was never scrapped. He was actually he's still in the movie. He just his role shrunk. <laughs> it was Michael Clark Duncan. Originally, before we came up with the idea of Coda being in the movie, um, Kenai teamed up with another bear to get to the salmon run, but it was an adult bear. And um, and it was Grizz. It was Michael Clark Duncan who was going to be the voice. Well, he'd end up being the voice in the movie anyway, but it was a much bigger role. Um, and he kind of learns his lesson through the course of the story. And if you remember, um, well, I've, most everybody has seen or that's going to see brother bear has seen it um you know with coda's mom getting killed instead it was um it was uh grizz's brother that had gotten killed in the story and because it was a brother story we felt we really wanted to keep it in that realm and so that hung for a long time uh, really developed the movie for a couple of years with that structure um until our it was our story team that came to us and said hey you know there's not a lot in here for our younger viewers and uh we actually and i fought them on it for a while until i finally you know sat back and kind of pulled my ego out of my butt and, and listened i always assumed they said hey this is disney we need to kill one of the parents <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so that's how that ended up. So we ended up uh, writing uh, Grizz out of the main body and wrote Coda in. So I have a question. Where is that character in the movie? He's at the Salmon Run. He's the one that passes around the fish. And, and, uh... He's got a couple lines. He's right? the one that had the said the chipmunk took the chipmunks lived in his tree and all this kind of stuff. Oh, Tug. yeah, Tug. Oh, yeah. that's right. Because uh, yeah, he's not Tug. named Grizz anymore. He's named. That's him. right. I, I, oh. he, in my mind, he was always Grizz. Tug, yeah. But Tug, yes. Oh. I hope it held up. What's that? Oh, there you go. <laughs> That's great. I'm going to go a little cooler. Here. Well, 
What is the difference between a Tyrannosaurus and an Allosaurus? I don't know. I have no idea either. Those are different species. Yep, that I know. Uh... <laughs> One is bigger than the other, maybe? They have different names. Different names, definitely. Um, different bone structure. Yeah. One of these things is not like the other. I'm just going to come in here really quick and darken up some I'm of the shadows. There we go. Uh, will you do a live stream with Manny in the future? Oh, yeah. We do live streams with Manny fairly often. About once or twice a year, it seems. Yeah, like. I would. Okay, maybe fairly often is not the right <laughs> adjective. Yeah, fairly often is like once a month. Eh, that'd be frequent. <laughs> <laughs> Like every other one? <laughs> yeah, that's fair enough. I'll give it to you. <laughs> I don't think you would know this question, but what's the new Frozen Shore Olaf presents about, Aaron? I have no idea. <laughs> I'm not with Disney anymore. It's actually on Disney Plus. Rivers were watching it the other day. It's pretty funny. It's actually just Olaf reenacting the movies. Like the classic Disney movies. Oh, really? It's kind of funny. It's they're like little eight minute shorts, and it's just him being a goofball, but like. Oh, is it set up like how he's trying to explain their whole their whole story to the tribe? Tribes be more important too. Uh, not that I caught, but I didn't watch any. I kept just seeing excerpts of it. I don't know why he was why he's doing it. I don't know what the premise of why he's acting them out is, but it's just you know. Him being, him being Ariel, him doing all of her, him being Ursula. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's literally the first episode, and that's all. But I know he does Lion King and all of them. Oh, man. They're just little shorts. I mean, I shouldn't be dismissive like that, but people work hard on the shorts. But that's the premise. Where it is. Since when? Since when has there been a paleontologist? Did I miss something? <laughs> because of the question of the Tyrannosaurus and Allosaurus. Just people like that. I know a few things yeah. about. A lot. I know a little bit about a lot of things, but not a lot about any one thing. <laughs> you stayed at a Holiday Inn much. That's right. I play an animator in real life. So I'm doing the grass on a completely separate layer, and then what I can do is lock that layer and I can vary up the color. So right now I'm doing everything the same color, 
but you'll see in a little bit I'm going to lock the layer and then vary it up. What did you think of Clockwork, Clockwork Orange? I've never seen it. Me neither. I've seen it. It's dark. I know it's dark. That's why I've never. Just not I mean, my, it's a good. I mean, it's it's Kubrick. It's not my thing. It's Stanley Kubrick. It's yeah, Kubrick. I know. It's just, it's yeah. It's not like I don't think you're missing anything. You know, it's better than what you probably because I didn't see it until way later, and I always had a a notion of what it might be. Yeah, yeah. It, it kind of it, it is, but it's it's a better movie than I thought it was. Right. But it's yeah, it's not like. You made it this part like, without seeing it, you know. It's kind of dated to me. Yeah. What was it? 1974 came out. Yeah, and you know, it's 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 got 70s pacing. Yeah. Oh, at the time, I think it was. Well, I was just looking at a clip from uh, completely. Um, not not having to do with pacing, but what's considered PC nowadays. And I was watching a clip from um, Blazing Saddles mm -hmm. and how it's obvious that it's a, a commentary on how ridiculous racism is and how stupid people are. But even now, like uh, it was, uh, was it some movie channel? They have a big introduction to it now explaining why it was done the way it was and you know so people don't get too offended it was really interesting uh here's a question for you or here's a suggestion for you the dark spot behind its head that almost could be like the entrance to a cave i was kind of think of the, thinking of thinking of it that way This Lion Gator reminds me of a Frank Frazetta painting YouTube comment. Ah, I'll take that as a compliment. Blackwork Orange came out in 1971, 50 years ago. Oh, 71. What advice would you give to someone starting to draw and animate later in life? Uh, the same advice I would give anybody. Just get your paper dirty and just continue to draw and experiment. And, you know, you're not learning unless you're making mistakes. So take chances and and just keep 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 at it. Don't get frustrated. Never think that you're too old. I get that question a lot hey i'm 32 years old am i too old no you're just no and just or even older you know 60 65 i want to get into art though then get into it you know enjoy it the bottom left could be like he's coming out of water yeah that's exactly what the intention is Actually, there's a that's all water down there. I just haven't finished rendering it yet. You know, we keep forgetting to turn on the cursor highlight thing. Oh yeah, okay. no big deal. We'll do it next week. Although, what made me think of it is Dustin when he is drawing in the lower left. Don't forget to hide him. Say again. When he's drawing in the lower left, mm -hmm. you don't. You need to hide him so he's not overlapping. He's not right now. Right. Uh, is there a theme for the contest other than being hybrid, like being dramatic or funny? Or... Nope. Just give me your best hybrid creature. You can present it any way you want. 
but make sure it's good. So impress me. Twitch question. Do you do any stretches or have any stretches for your hand before you draw? Not really. No, I just sit down. Drawing is my is my stretch. Is it a kind of lion that has dark hair underbelly? Uh, yeah, most lions do have. You know, adult males do have that. A lot of people joining late. Hey, can you tell us about that art contest again? I wasn't here earlier. So if you go to creatureartteacher.com slash Matt, we are giving away another iPad Pro from our friends at attachforyourmac.com. And the theme is animal hybrid, which is why Aaron is drawing an animal hybrid today. So we want to see your animal hybrids. And you have until December 14th to submit your entry. And the winner will get... Uh, be announced on December 17th on a live stream. Good. And we will yeah, give you a uh, new, our uh, lucky winner will win an iPad Pro, an Apple Pencil, and a year of, a year's annual subscription to creatureartteacher.com. Also, it's Black Friday. Uh, everything on our website is 40% off or more. Uh, some of it's all the way up to 80% off. Uh, our character design course, which is our number one selling course, is at its lowest price ever. It's fifteen bucks. Our come on, man, that's too low. I know it's Black Friday. Acting for animation is just fifteen bucks. Uh, painting and procreate is just fifteen bucks. Our uh, human anatomy course is fifteen dollars. We've got a bunch of five dollar courses like the four legged animation bundle, the charcoal drawing course, and all of the Photoshop sets are just a dollar. This weekend only. Creatureartteacher.com. <laughs> it's dot com. Almost done, you guys. Creatureartteacher.net is dot com. Someone's asking again, does it have to be 2D art? Nope, you can do 3D if you want. It can be digital, it can be traditional. Do anything you want. We just want to see your best mashups. And if you're looking for new references for any English tournaments, <laughs> also got a new Africa, Africa pack finally out. Yep. And there's two different versions. There's three different versions. There's the whole bundle or two separates, and one is for the big cats of Africa, and the other is for animals and birds of Africa. And each one has over 600 or 700 photos, and the full pack is 1,400 photos. So go over there and check those out. What is King of the Hill, Aaron? What? I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> That's a random question. Yeah. Well, there's King of the Hill, the game. But then there's also King of the Hill, the animated show. King of the Hill, the game? Oh, you mean just, just fighting out in the yard? Yeah. yeah. The yard we, we always did that all the time. We loved playing King of the Hill. <laughs> yeah, and there's also the King of the Hill uh, I must have a, show. I yeah. must have a bigger imagination because I call it King of the Mountain. Yes, we did have that. <laughs> <laughs> Or as yeah, I would call it, King of the Rock. Very nice. And there's nothing you girl can do about it.
I'm going to lock this layer now. And now I can go in with various other colors. I blow this up a little bigger. You can see that I can. Uh, can you share any tips for drawing on a black paper sketchbooks? It's harder than drawing on white or brown paper. Yeah, well, it's hard because you the darkest value is already attained. So anything else you draw is going to be, is going to be light. So that's hard to do. Um, that's why I work on a gray gray background gray paper because I can go light and dark you know that's when you're doing that you're just going to have to you got to force yourself to um you have to uh really just think about your value structure is everything's going to be lighter and so if you want to have any mid-tones you got to paint them in there Um, do your grandkids have you draw them their favorite characters? No. My grandkids could not care less about me drawing. <laughs> they really couldn't. They usually go, hey, granddad, can you draw? No! <laughs> <laughs> Can hear my father out there cutting wood. Mm -hmm. yep. It's absolutely amazing to me that he's as good of a carpenter as he is with this uh, basically no vision. Uh, yeah, he's blind. Yep. He does everything by kind of being able to see a measurement. And feel. I know, but I'm, I just cannot imagine running power saw. Yeah, it's, I know it's amazing, and it, it freaks me out too. But it's so funny because he's so adept at it. Makes me nervous. What? Mars asking, does anybody remember the time when Nick had a pixel face? <laughs> True. And lived in a closet. <laughs> so it says Steve is in the in Nick's old closet. <laughs> Imaginary Steve. Uh, Mandy Lee is asking you, Nick, uh, do you draw? Sorry, I don't recall. Uh, I went to art school. Yes, I can draw. I was trained in animation, uh, but I've spent probably the last 20 years doing computer work and getting very rusty in art. So, yeah. Put yes, he draws. A few more miles on the old drawing game. Hey, do you still practice? 
Uh, not regularly, but every so often. Though. Aaron, who's your favorite Muppet in Sesame Street character? What do you think I am, five? <laughs> <laughs> Bert and Ernie. Bert and Ernie. Yeah. Sesame oh, Street came cool. on the year after I was born. So I loved, I grew up, I was the original generation that started with Sesame Street. Mm. I was born in 1968 and it came on in 1969. Wow. And I remember yeah, watching it all through like 1971, 72. <clears throat> wow. Hard to believe Sesame Street is still around. Yeah. yeah. They are still around, right? Yeah. yeah. My Lord. It's my favorite generation. Yeah. Easily the best David Bowie movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <Jennifer. laughs> uh, does Justin have any texture packs that you could use on this hybrid? Um, I don't think they have any texture packs, although I'm pretty sure we have texture packs on futurefuture.com, and right now they're only a dollar. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. An entire elephant texture skin pack. All kinds of reptiles in there. Aaron might even use some of it today. We'll see. Yeah. No, no texture packs today. This is going to be left to a uh, illustration field. Illustration field. Or exactly. Sketch. No, and also I'm pretty sure you could um, possibly use the photos that um, are my reference packs as uh, photo bashing material. Oh yeah, for sure. In fact, in one of your courses, you talk about how to uh, photo bash, mm -hmm. uh, which was the uh, hidden creatures, I believe. That, one's, that one's fifty percent off this weekend. I know I sound like a commercial, but it's Black Friday. Come on, that's right. Hey, I'm kind of trying to segue <laughs> into as many of them as, as possible. Was it just the hidden creatures one they? They show photo bashing or what's that? This one was another one. Uh, the digital painting, uh, the Photoshop digital painting course. He oh, had the whole course on digital painting. And, yep. He shows how to photo bash, how to make brushes, all kinds of stuff. And is that one currently 50%? It is 40% off. Oh, 40. I'm almost done here. I'm getting close to my one more thing. Just adding little details. Uh, if you if you worked on Emperor's New Groove, what character would you have animated? Um, that's a good question. What would have I had him? He's my. Yeah. <laughs> I, love I would have totally love. loved watching Croc. Um. Oh, who would I have animated? I don't know. Probably the llama. Uh, Cusco llama? Cusco. Or, uh, yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, David Spade. David Spade, yeah. But, um, and I think he's one of the few Disney characters that actually breaks the fourth wall. He is. Besides Deadpool. <laughs> uh, how did you meet Manny? Tinder. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I always got to use that joke. <laughs> um. No, uh, he was doing a show in L.A. Uh, that I thought was really cool. And um, so I contacted him to say, hey, if you ever do it again, I'd love to be part of it. And we just got to be friends after that. It was, it was pretty simple. And the rest, as they say, is that. 
and the rest is history. This history. And that's the way the cookie crumbled. Who animated uh, Lois in Princess and the Frog? I have no idea. Lois was the, the giant gator, right? Yes. Oh, that oh I'm is that on the stick. Oh, that was Eric Goldberg. I really don't know much about that movie except <laughs> who animated the oh, the alligator. You seen it here? Oh yeah, I went to the rap party. Okay. Yep. I'm pretty much there. I wanted this to kind of have a Frazetta feel. I think I got that. The part that always made me laugh so hard from that movie is when they're like, man, you play real good. Why don't you play with a real bit? Oh, I tried once. <laughs> <laughs> play for a crowd. He dived in, didn't get on fire. It didn't end well. <laughs> Twitch question. Hey, Aaron, uh, this is for my first time in the chat. Uh, do you know if there's a different process for creating game art in comparison with, say, TV illustration? You know, I, I don't know that the pro, I, I, I don't know. But I do know that the same level of thinking and design go into both. Yeah, in, in the concept and visual development phase, there's basically no difference. There's no difference, right? Yeah, yeah you're just getting ideas out on you know, now when you get into actual final product, there can be a little bit of differences because, you know, you get into doing textures for a game and polygon counts and stuff like that. But that's that's different from like this this phase of it would be exactly the same where you're developing the world and developing the story. Right. Sometimes you get a little boxed in in the game world by the mechanics of the game, like that could actually drive the whole look of the game, you know, because the game needs to be able to do X, Y, and Z, so therefore it needs to look a specific way, you know? Justin, how do you think well, uh, the Lion Gator would sound like? <laughs> sound like Arnold, I'd be back. Now, I think I think it would have the same kind of growl that a lion would have, but at the same tone as a gator's mating call. I think it would be voiced by Fran Drescher. <laughs> Fran Drescher from the nanny. <laughs> I like I like your sound that you gave it before, Dustin. It's like <laughs> <laughs> the spider fence sound. Yeah, the spider fence sound. Do you sometimes, a YouTube question, do you sometimes feel like you do too much when it comes to drawing or animating? Like, is it hard to know when to stop? Oh, sure. You like just stop. No, I think everybody's overworked with these for sure. Uh, when you get a chance, Aaron, can you zoom and pan on this just because you're... Yeah, I'm just... Right now and, yeah. I think I'm pretty much there. Let me uh, do something here. going to blur those foreground elements a touch. There we go. Uh, it's not much time ago. You said something about streaming in Clip Studio Paint. Are you still going to do that? Yes. We can do a, a video on it. I think we should do a cold turkey. I can smell turkey. I know. I smell it too. <laughs> What do you set your pastel C brush? Too, so that it's not just a flat line, but it fades out. Whenever I use a whenever I use a brush, it's mostly flat. You lower it's right it. up here. It's under uh, 
There's two there's two different buttons up here in Photoshop. Let me where's my highlight thing? Presentify. Okay, oh presentify. Presentify. Yep, boom. And then not just all the out of already up in the menu, like either. This one? Yep. And this two highlight cursor. Okay, so you got a button here, you have a button here. This one uh, controls the taper. So the harder I press, the wider the line gets. The lighter I press, the thinner the line. And then this, uh, and so if I turn it off, it's just a straight line like that. Let me blow this up. Actually, let me just do it on something new. So, without that, without that button push, let me pull these down here. It's just a straight line like that. If I and that's and this is with the pressure sensitivity on. So if if I turn, if I turn the pressure sensitivity off, I get a white, I get a solid line like this. If I turn pressure sensitivity on, I get. I can draw light or I can draw hard and it gets darker. I always keep that on. Now, the other thing too is the taper. So if I draw light, it's a thin line. If I draw hard, it gets to be a thin line or a thicker line. So you get this, you know, if I gradually press harder and harder, it gets darker and thicker. And that's, and that's more like a piece of chalk. You know, that's why I created this, this brush. So that draws like a piece of chalk. That's why it's called pastel C. Yes. I'm assuming there was an A and a B. What's that? I'm assuming there was an A and a B, but you, you settled on C. Yes, I settled on C because there was a failed A and B. Yes. I am almost there. Sorry. Thank you for your patience. Uh, she always asked me, shouldn't he be dripping from the water with the uh, water sparkle thingy? You know what? Everybody thinks they're so smart. Oh, and, you... and they turn out to be smart because, yes, they should be dripping. <laughs> did you abandon the, the tongue? Yeah, I did. I took it out. I just thought I saw the line there when you zoomed in. I can tell <laughs> the line or something else. Let's see. Oh, that cursor highlight thing is annoying me now. Oh, really? <clears throat> oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, no. Anyway. <laughs> no, it's fine. You don't have to worry about it. All right, so I'm going to go into my... Where are they? Foliage brushes, because these are for sale. Only a dollar. Only See, a here, dollar. I got, here I got a little branch. That is the lowest that has ever been done. I can come up here you know, and go gray. We went Actually, any longer, no. we'd have to send people. <laughs> you get 50 cents with every purchase. It just breaks it up nicely. Nice and even. In the background. I can throw a little... <laughs> it just breaks it up. Breaks all, the, all that stuff up. A little, with a little. <laughs> exactly. A little a little on top. Yeah. There we go. Wow. That's <laughs> intelligent. <laughs> Our intelligence is slowly diminishing. <laughs> All right. I almost thought I wrote there, buddy. <laughs> Drop that face. <laughs> like working with multiple copies of my four year old son. Children. <laughs> We're just children. I keep saying four. He just turned five. He just turned five. Slave again. I tell you, though. Know. 
<laughs> Donnie on YouTube asks, what are some courses planned for next year? Well, before we get to next year, we got to get through this year. And... Yeah, I don't have a clue. No, we've got five courses coming out before the end of the year. We've got Armand and David's courses, both of which are in pre-order now, our future of teacher. Yeah. We've got Tony Cipriano's course, which is uh, Making Monsters. That comes out on Tuesday of next week. We've got a new course on animation with Tim Hodge coming out. And Aaron's got a new course on animation all coming out this year, um, before the end of the year. So that means this is the best time ever to become a member on our website, uh, which is also on the sale, because that gets you all of those. And then uh, next year, for sure, we'll be doing, I'm, I'm sure we'll be doing another animal course, more animation, all that stuff. Yeah. So stay tuned. I imagine after you get through this animation course, you're probably due to do another an animal one, right? Yeah, I'd like to do another animal one. I want to get back on Snow Bear, so we, I might take a little time off of doing... Yeah, we're trying uh, to... We're, the goal is to focus on getting Snow Bear done as well as some additional... Yeah, which means animation. I might have to take some time off of doing courses so that I can focus on getting Snow Bear done. So there's, you know, we're trying to find ways of where we can do that and not sacrifice but Manny, our course, commitment to you guys. Which Manny's is, course should be coming out in 20, yeah. 2022. Uh, we're in the early planning stages of a course with Peter Hahn. Yeah. Amazing, so hopefully that makes it out. Lots of stuff in the works. Yep. Follow show. We got to lift a mile along the course if we want to do it. Some of these lines I'm going to get rid of, especially in the arm. Shot in the arm. The legs. All right. Well, I think I'm, uh, I think I'm, uh, I think you're, uh, I think I'm ready to take my shirt off. No! No! Uh, Miss Schoenberg, uh, I think now we can get our feet and we can take my shirt off. <laughs> All right. That's it. Gotta sign it. Now you gotta sign it and you gotta zoom in and make sure we show those details. Yes. Yeah, Still fairly days. loose. I kept it loose today. Keeping things loose is tight. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so there it is. There's the full image right there. Let me... Oops. <laughs> really see that texture. <laughs> So there we are. So you can see up close, it's fairly loose. Matter of fact, now that I see it up close. Gorgeous. I guess uh, one more thing. Yeah. One more thing. There Unfortunately. That's when you thought you were out. He sucked you back in. <laughs> that mouth wasn't dark enough in there. In the deep depths. In the deep depths of the back of the throat. It flattened out for me back there. That feels a little better. So there he is. Crocodile. Crocodile. <laughs> very, very loose. Don't be afraid. You don't have to get in there and render everything. 
Because the whole idea is you want things to come together. Shoot. Did you miss something? Did you miss something in you? Yeah, I'm like, wait a minute, no, it must have been. Whoops. Needed a little highlight right there on that on that heel. I guess there's another one more thing. Yeah. Never it's kind of an idea, idea for an app where it was like it's like a drawing time challenge. And as you draw, if you go over time, it starts erasing your lines. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it starts erasing them at the same rate you're making them. <laughs> there we go. So this is our lion crocodile hybrid. Lyodile. All right. Yes, a lyodile. A lyodile. Lyodile. If you guys prefer lyodile or crocodile, let us know in the comments. <laughs> Bingo. Put like a little heart like right there above his head. <laughs> be like, oh look. <laughs> I'm saying uh, the guardian, guardian. A what? Gate half gate or half line. Oh yeah. Alagayan. <laughs> Alian. Got it. Just a little highlight right there. <laughs> Alian. It's like alien, but Alian. Alian. It's very Alien. fancy. They're very fancy. Oh, we have a little highlight in the eye. That's why. I do think if you go in and work this more, I think adding the wet stuff. Oh, I forgot that. Dang. No, I meant to do that. Sorry, it's not done yet. So, three more things. Three more things. What's that? Forgot to add the water dripping. Whoops. Oh, dear. Switch question. Do you like to listen to music when you work, or is it distracting? I like to listen to music when I work. I just... um. We can't have music playing while we're doing the live stream. But I'm always listening to music when I'm working. There is actually a whole website that does royalty-free music just for streamers. But uh, it, it'd be weird if we were talking over it. Yeah. Martin Burton just wrote 12 hours later. <laughs> I just thought of something else. What's that? Like he just came out of the water. I yeah. Think it's like fur a little bit darker. So. Yeah. But it's just, I'm afraid of if I do that, I could, I could try it um, because it's already in shadow. Mm -hmm. I'm just afraid of it getting too dark. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. I think it looks good. So let me try something. I can try that. Just do it on its own layer. Zanji said this has a bit of a James Yearney feel to it. Yeah, I can I can lighten it too. Yes, it was on Facebook. Stay out of my channel! But Mark Martin wrote 12 hours later. There we go. It is a Lion Gator. <laughs> And Oscar Francis said, you deserve an Oscar, so here I am. Oh, nice. <laughs> Very clever. He was nominated for one. I was. Oscar Francis. Oh. I do like the way that looks, though. Yeah. I think I'm going to... Lightened a little bit, because, like... Looks like he's coming out of like bossy water. Mm hmm. I like that. Um, it looks really good either way. Oh, yeah, I like the shadow. It's uh, meant to be wet. Yeah, 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 no, but I mean, it looks so good. Yeah. <laughs> Could be lighten it a little bit. Well, I mean, it's really too much. Yeah, some sort of pop up there. Right? Yeah, it was some guy, it was a junk thing. Asking me if I wanted to. Oh, that's just now I can I can enhance this by adding a fairly strong highlight because it's wet. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, it would be more. I was gonna say that more of a like shimmer. A of highlight yeah. shimmer of the wetness. That sheen. 
<laughs> Jenna on YouTube asks, Hey Aaron, will you ever do a course on, or stream perhaps on drawing young animals and babies uh, just just because their anatomy is so much different, etc.? Yes, I could do that. He touches on it a little bit in our in your character design course. I do. Drawing cute because he talks about proportions of animals. And he also talks about about it in the big cats course and stuff, drawing cubs and the proportions of that and the bears course as well. Yeah, if you've never seen my um, my video on drawing cute, it might cover a lot of what you're thinking. Uh, actually, you can find that video on our YouTube channel, and it's a free sneak peek of the character design course, which is uh, at its lowest price ever right now. Actually, I will post a link, and you can watch the video right on that page. And then buy the course if you're so inclined. Yeah. Tighten those up a little bit. Like a hippo. When they get out of the water, they're kind of sparkly. This should be on the fur. Catch a little bit of skylight there. On that thing, Nick, how can you be so bad with the post links? He's good. He's a faster linker in the wedge. Do you link the chair? <laughs> There we go. Good calls, you guys. It does look so good. Yeah, I love this. Aaron came out great. Like the right. sun going into the light, it just really just gets. <laughs> there we go. There's our little illustration for the day. It is amazing. Thanks. Oh, we've got this highlighted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you sign it? Yep. Thanks. Hey. And now I got to save it. File. Save as. Live stream images. I got to go into. We have a whole section in there. Come on, Dropbox. Why is it doing this? It's all kind of frozen. Let me. There it goes. The hard drive is Wake up. Yeah. To sleep, you get it. You haven't used it for a little bit. Oh. Oh, it's freezing up on me again. There we go. Uh, live stream images. We'll call this one. Well, I want to be able to keyword it. So we'll lion croc odile. Save. Okay, now let's do uh, so we can uh, so we can post it. We'll save as a copy, and we'll save it as a JPEG file. There it is, folks. Nice example of an animal hybrid. So this is kind of thing I want you guys to do. This is your assignment. So do an animal hybrid. Surprise us. Do something cool. And um, we will post the winners in two weeks, right? Yep. Yep, and just like we did. Well, three weeks. Oh, oh, three weeks. Okay, yeah, there you two go. Two weeks, basically-ish, to enter. The and, it's, um, and we are competing for another iPad Pro, correct? Correct. Absolutely. All right. If you go to creatureartteacher.com slash Matt, uh, we want to see your best animal hybrids, all the rules... Entry details over there.
So um, it's Black Friday, you guys. Go on over to our site at CreatureArtTeacher.com and find all kinds of stuff on sale today. Um, Nick. Yeah, everything is uh, 40% off or more, all the way up to 80% off some of our classes. We've got our acting for animation course, the character design course, procreate course, human anatomy course, Chuck's story course. They're all only 15 bucks each. $1 brush sets, $5 charcoal drawing classes, deals, 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 plus two new courses on pre-order, three if you count Tony Cipriano's DVR course. We've got visual development with Armand Serrano, uh, drawing um, with life and energy and story from David Coleman, and making monsters in ZBrush from Tony Cipriano, all on pre-order for 50% off. And then, last but not least, is Dustin's amazing photo pack from Africa, African Wildlife, which I used today to help me get this, this image done. And, and so uh, and I recommend it. It's a great pack to use uh, for your hybrid animal if you're going to do it. And there's over 1,400 photos in here. Yeah. And probably the highest count is the, there's a lot of big cats. Yeah. And which is why the... When you're looking at them divided, there's the big cat pack and the animals and birds of Africa. Pack. And I'll update the image, by the way. It says over 1,300 images, but that's because I did six. The one had like 600 and something, and the one had 700 and something. And I just did quick math and said, well, that's at least over 1,300. Right? Which is true. It's not wrong. Yeah. Not wrong. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I hope you guys have a great, great weekend. And remember, come on back over to our uh, website again on Monday because we've got even more sales for Cyber Monday. And uh, I hope you guys have had a great day yesterday uh, and uh, have a great rest of your week and uh, be safe, put some beauty back into the world, be kind to one another, and I will talk to you next week. Later. Bye.